than that, we've got the calm, relaxing. <gasps> Citizen sleeper. Ooh. We're in the second DLC, aren't we? I think so. I think we're in the second DLC. Second out of three, I believe. Let's see how far we can get to that. I think we can get to somewhere in the third DLC. And then maybe next week finish the game. We'll see, we'll see. Did you look at the True Achievements uh, article for games that might leave in May? Citizen Sleeper's on the list. Luckily, we've already pretty much finished it, so if it got announced to leave in like a week from now, I, I could totally just get the achievements not worry about. I don't have to worry about rushing it and making my voice suffer, right? What, 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 what you doing down there? <clears throat> Something probably... Probably something cool like play this game tonight and you can ban me. Eh, who knows? Oh, I've got three points. No, wait, no, I don't. Never mind. Two upgrade points. I was looking at the top right with the three point thing. Uh, two. Never mind. Oh, yeah. I always have it higher for the title screen because it's quieter. I'll turn it down. Okay, that's better. I don't think we'll complete this game today. I spent like two hours in chapter one, so I might get through chapter two of this DLC. I don't think I'll complete the game tonight, though. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Last time I talked to all the ships, but I don't remember what to do with all the ships. I have to do some stuff. I have to help out or something? Pilgrim Seed wants me to... Uh, help refugees, seed support... What's this one? Oh, flux data. Uh. Hmm. Unload supplies. I know I read all these last time. I know I read them all. What do I want to work on first? Do we want to work on the dust house? Not the greenhouse, the dust house. Do we want to do the data first? Maybe we should do this. It's already halfway there. That's Take, Metcap, Supply. I've got five of them? Jeez. Oh, maybe I harvested them from over here. I'm fucking set, man. I got five club heads. And what, does it only take one or two to make a stabilizer? It takes two. I'm like fucking set. Okay, I am growing more mushrooms. As long as we keep getting more mushrooms, I got three more spores for the next cycle. Or Prophelia, huh? Is that the alternative to completing this game tonight? I'm not completing this game tonight. Might finish the second DLC and be in the third one. I think next week's more, more likely. Next week is more likely. I haven't even read about what to do for the other achievements yet. Just saw they were all missable ones. I was like, probably got to do another playthrough. Nothing, never mind. Oh, I think we'll do Pilgrim Seed first. I said I should use my dice to go get the data. To do that, I should see what what dice I need for the data. Is it over here. I forget if it's over here. What's our mind just sitting thinking about stuff? I see. Oh wait. 
Oh, it'll take a five or a six. Let's do it. Hmm. That's the only one I see. Guess we don't need multiples. I don't have any more caps. Let's do this. Oh, that's a plus two. Okay. Wheat. You focus on the most important tasks first. Ship repair, supply chains, organization, and quickly see the effects. Pilgrim Seed's internal agriculture systems are up and running. I don't need your Matsutake right now. I believe this. I don't believe this. I don't need my shit. Soul finds you deep in the layers of the Pilgrim Seed, working on a patch for a life support vent. You hear him coming, his suit hissing as he does. I had to ask around to find you. He smiles. Seems you know the place better than me these days. Um, uh, 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 I doubt it. Soul nods. I was on the work crew that built this thing, so maybe you are right. He winks. I for a wink. I can't wink on the model. I, I. Actually, I pro I technically could, but... When I originally set it up, set up all the parameters and stuff, I noticed that when I turned my head toward chat, that one of the eyes would close and the other one would stay open. It was weird. And sometimes when I just normally blink, they would it would just be one blinking and not both. And that bugged me, so I turned on the setting to link the uh, eyes so that they would always blink together. Therefore, the downside is I can't wink. But I'll survive. I'll survive somehow, some way. Some way. Hopefully, God damn it. I mean, I'm like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I can do it too. Watch, watch this. Watch me. Watch me. Look, I got three purple weeks. T take that. Take that. Anyway, Soul holds out a hand. Stand up and let me see you. He pulls you pulls you to your feet. I don't believe we ever had a sleeper on Ember's hearth. Soul looks you up and down. You sure do make me wish we had. Could have done with a few workers as good as you. Um, uh, uh, thank you. Soul nods. You're welcome. Seems like I owe you some answers, seeing as you've been working hard on the pilgrim seed these past cycles. He leans against a crate, his suit creaking. What do you want to know about? Hmm. I mean, we're probably going to learn about the flux from the flux data. He, he probably doesn't know too much. I want to know why you, how I ended up in that suit. You! Soul squints at you. You want to know about me? I'm not sure that was part of the deal I was thinking of, Sleeper. Unless you were asking about this. He raps on the metal of his suit. Yes! I'm presuming that he can't really walk, I would guess. He needs the suit in order to walk. In case you haven't guessed, this is the only thing keeping me vertical. <gasps> no way! He adjusts a shoulder piece. It's a lifter suit, made for working the fields. We had to modify it so I could walk around after the accident. And that's all I'm saying, Sleeper. Because to be honest with you, I don't owe you more than that. You want to know about the flux? About Ember's hearth? Go ahead. But don't pry into my life and I won't pry into yours. I mean, I'll tell you about my life. I'm a robot copied from a human. Boom, there you go. More than happy to tell you all about my robot existence. Wait, three purple wings in a note? God damn it. You found something to note? Man. So fast, too. So lets the silence sit, staring hard at the floor. The suit seems to loom over him, looking more like a burden than a support. 
With the bars around his head, you suddenly start to think of it as a cage. Look, I don't mean to be rude. Let's leave it there. There's too many eyes on me on this ship as it is, and I'd rather just slip into the background, thank you very much. Soul shifts on the crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? There was something. Soul nods. What do you want to know about? Uh, how about Ember's Hearth? Sure, he smiles. I mean, I spent my whole life on that rock, so I have plenty to tell. I'll save my life story for another time, he winks. But the short of it is that Hearth is the first of Ember's moons, the biggest and the most populated, which is down to the successful terraforming system Cybel set ba up back when Solheim owned the system. Hmm. Terraforming? That's when they, like, um, uh, make, make a new planet home. And I have a vague idea of what terraforming is. How about the first question? How are relations with the other moons? You know, I did that double press thing sometimes. Uh, I do. Hey, Ivor, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Purple Pog, nope. You didn't find anything. God oh, damn it. I'm doing pretty well, Ivor. It's Friday! And now it's time for some chill citizen sleepover. As we try to solve the mystery of what this flux thing is. Well, what's going on? Why are these refugees here and not somewhere else? And well, what's happening? Soul smiles. Depends on who you've been talking to. You shouldn't mistake me for a politician, sleeper. That's for others to do. He gives you a look. But Ember's step was a test ground for the terraforming tech that Hearth is built on, while Ember's song was the extraction site for the raw materials and energy needed to make it work. You could imagine that might lead to some... tension. However, Soul holds up a hand. Despite what people might say, Hearth was never fully stable. Sol shakes his head. Ibel liked to talk it up, but after they pulled out and Solheim left, our people discovered they'd have to keep the systems running themselves or the place would soon end up as dry as step. Hearth was good as long as the eva as the wait. Hearth was good as long as the evaporators kept running, kept filling our skies with clouds. Even after the collapse, our people kept those things going turning that subsurface ocean into a periwinkle blue sky. Soul smiles. Flux ended that, though. And when they failed, the rain fought failed. Or the rains failed. And the harvest with it. Soul pauses. <laughs> oh. They didn't have any, like, backups? They couldn't fix it? And soon you have a city without a way to feed itself. Soul shudders. That's when we, some of us, made the decision to set out on this place. He gestures at the pilgrim seed. And look for another future. Soul shifts on his crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? Wait, it lets me ask all the questions. Whoa, there was so. Ask about flux. I got the opportunity to ask all the questions. I thought I had to pick one, but I could actually pick whichever one I wanted. Well, double pressed again. Soul sighs. That's what I imagined. He scratches at his beard. I can't say I'm an expert, but I can tell you what we witnessed on Hearth. At first, we ignored it. A few farms had their autom automation systems blink out. Lifter suits locked up. Bots reset their schedules. Nothing we hadn't seen before. But then the news came out of Passero, I guess. I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, they'd been hit harder. The local network had gone down and no one could get it back up. It was rough for us for or it was rough for a while, but out in the farmland we were used to that. Asarow Capital of Hearth. Tens of thousands of souls made it their home. Soul grimaces. Anyway, we thought the flux was a freak event until the day they got the network running again. That's when the cascade happened. System after system corrupted. Wait, I mean system after system corrupted. Data lost. And then another flux hit. And another. The bots were running circles in the fields. People had to be cut out of lifter suits like mine. And the other... Er, and the city... I never saw it, but I heard from the others. Soul shivers. It probably turned into an apocalyptic scenario, man. Everybody fending for themselves. Stealing food. Looting all kinds of shit. 
It only got worse from there. We couldn't seem to fight it. It cut us right open. That's what I know about the flux. Some folks say it came from the inner system, that it might be connected to some old tech there or something. But I never heard anything more than rumors. Old scratches their beard. Sorry, I don't have better news. Little shifts on the crate. Anything else you wanted to ask? Wait, I can ask something else? But there's nothing else. There's a, what do you, uh, 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 oh, okay, it gives me this thing. Soul dance. what do you want to know about? Something buzzes on Soul's suit. He glances at it and frowns. Looks like time's up, sleeper. Soul stands, flexing against the suit. He takes his cane in his hand. Keep it up, sleeper. He smiles as he leaves. You're making me think I need to start making new plans for this place. With that, Soul leaves, and you wonder what he means. As he creaks away down the corridor, you can't help but feel there's more to him than it seems. Hmm. We did one of, one of the three things. So we need to help all three to fill this bar, right? You could. You could what? Let's, let's check out this data. Eek receives the data on their slate and begins decoding. Begins work decoding it immediately. Wow! Sleeper, come look at this! Peek is poring over one of the displays of the makeshift decoding suite they have set up in the Climbing Briar's cargo bay. On the screen, a clump of data pathways like an ingrown root ball, has started to untangle. This is an existing node, corrupted by the flux event. It's totally twisted up. They glance at you to check you are listening. But inside... He watches the unwinding pathways leave behind patterns of negative spaces, like shadows staying behind despite their caster leaving. Is a whole other data set. Eek's eyes shine bright in the pale screen light. The flux event somehow seeds this data deep into the gaps in the node, wrapping them around it. Hmm. What I said? Oh. Oh. Um. Why? Big pauses. I have no idea. You watch the screen, the pattern of shadows becoming obvious now as each layer of pathways is pulled away. The flux event itself really did a number on unprotected nodes like this one. Most of the eye systems are screened against radiation and interference, but these exposed nodes? Peek makes a ripping motion with their hands. Torn apart. Peek points to a thick tangle of threads on the screen. Look here, it looks like it's been tangled purposefully. But it's actually that all the points within the node have been randomly rearranged. It's as if the node was a ba bag of ball bearings and the flux shook them. Not bops! What? Not bops! Not bops! Oh my gosh. Getting spoiled with those tonight. The pathways tried to account for the rearrangement once the system came back on. Hence the tangle. Beak pauses as the node continues to unwind. Although, Peek muses, it was less like shaking a bag of ball bearings and more like making them all simultaneously occupy a superposition of every possible position in the bag before locking them back into a new configuration. That's a big long sentence. <gasps> That's a lot of words to read. But no break. I had to make my own break. They smile sheepishly. But that's a technicality. Does any of that help us? For now, not especially. It explains the damage Flux does to systems, but the method is an exotic one. Eek runs a hand through their hair. What we need is to know what is causing it. Where is it coming from? Eek turns away from the screen, meeting your eye. And there's something else. They pause. Have you spoken with the refugees? A little. Eek lowers their voice instinctively. What they are reporting. Massive system failures. Cascading collapses of life support. 
of terraforming systems. Total data corruption. He swallows. He just like, this sounds really bad, man. This sounds really bad. Sounds really bad, man. The Flux shouldn't do that. It can fundamentally rearrange the structure of systems, especially those poorly shielded. But totally collapsing heavy-duty industrial systems? Fail-safes and all? That doesn't make sense. Hmm. Are you saying it could be more than one cause? Huh? Could there be deliberate sabotage? Oh, no. Those kinds of systems are built for deep space, for solar flares and radiation. The flux might penetrate them, but any reconfiguration should have been repairable. He looks back at the screen, where the de decoding node lies almost fully open. A shadow pattern of the negative spaces that existed within its scrambled interior darkens the screen, like a set of bruises showing the pattern of the object that made them. I need to look into something. I have an idea what might be causing this wave, triggering the flux, but I need time to research it. Can I help? Eek shakes their head. I'm sorry, sleeper, but I want to keep this to myself for now. If you need something to do, the flotilla could surely do with the help. From what I heard from Esh, things are tense there. Where is Esh? She was going to go get the... The weapon explosives that she accidentally, stupidly left somewhere someone could steal them, right? He glances around the bay. Must be out. I've been focusing on this, so I can't say I've noticed. Although the quiet is nice. They smile. He was so absorbed in his slate. Oh wait, they were so absorbed in their slate. <gasps> Alpha Pog? Is that so? Give me some time, sleeper. Peek turns back to their console. I'll have some answers soon enough, I hope. You take one last glance at the uncoiling node as you leave. The dark shapes it leaves behind somehow troubling. You try to shake them from your mind. There are things to be done elsewhere. You got six days? Peek's progress. Peek is researching something to do with the flux event and seems totally absorbed. They'll let you know when they're ready. Oh, sure. I guess we'll work on our dust houses next. What? You access the esoteric systems of the dust houses and get totally lost in their subroutines. Extracting yourself is exhausting. God damn it. You notice a bug in the wind cycling system and manage to fix it. Aki gives you a knowing look. It seems like you are proving yourself. Bah. Hmm, do I want to do that? I guess we could try it. You look at some of the shutter control systems fried by the flux of it. It's slow progress, but the crew will notice the fix. Well. Now I'm starving and I need foods. It's a long way to go buy food, isn't it? Whee! I'm to sleep. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? Hope you're feeling better today. Feeling awesome. Whoa, look at those dice. Except the one in the middle. That's some pretty good dice rolls. They're all right. Away!
Do, 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 do. Certainly am. You certainly are, huh? 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 I can't believe this. We had a half day of school and came back home and slept for six hours. That sounds like a good time, huh? Even better, it would have been able to skip school, period. But, you know, six hours is, or half day is not too bad. Isn't that can six hours of sleep? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Remember, step refugee. A dust house lady. Uh, wow. What voice did I have for her last time? I don't really remember. How'd I get big like that? I mean, I'm allowed to be whatever size I want. If I play the whole game like this, I might, might be okay, but you guys won't be able to see the characters or really anything important. I guess I wouldn't be blocking the tax, but it won't work that way. But if I'm like this, you really can't see anything. Well, I hide over here most of the time. However, it's my stream! I can do what I want. If I want to play the rest of the game like this, I could do it. Not sure that'd make for interesting gameplay viewing, though. Just watch me be like, blah, 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 words, blah, 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 words, blah, 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 the whole thing. Like, no. Nom, 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 nom. Bible thumb, no. It's okay. Be brave. Be breath. Deep, deep breath, okay? <gasps> deep breath. <sighs> deep breath. We'll be fine. Rifle stare. What? 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 You what? You what? I'll get back to reading, I suppose. Wait, what was her voice again? Mm, just pick one. I see you've been contributing. Aki stands next to you at the dust house window. I was unsure what to expect when we joined the flotilla on its voyage to the eye. But after the journey across the system, then the quarantine, and then the flux reaching all the way out here, too... Aki stops herself. Thank you. She bows a little. The other ships have only been interested in sending us supplies, but we grow all we need. She gestures at the dust house. What the dust houses need, that is the problem that concerns us. She smiles and turns to you. Shall we go inside? Uh, into the dust house? Where else? She taps away at a panel by the window. Seems only fair that after your help with the support systems... You get to see what it is that you are maintaining. Aki leads you to an opening beside the window. You pass through a dark changing room. You notice Aki is sliding on an oxygen mask and visor. Ooh, but I'm a robot. I don't need no oxygen mask and visor. You talk too much? I'm sorry, but this game requires a lot of talking, you know. I'm not going to be like that the whole game, you know. She looks at the swirling dust inside. Inside, it's just like Ember Step. Thin atmosphere, constant dust storms, nothing that will bother you. She passes you a mask. The dust isn't exactly pleasant to inhale, however, so take this. You hold it to your face. She leads you through a short decontamination tunnel with its fizzling panels of purifying light, and then through into the dust house. Immediately, the wind and the heat hits you. You feel the rough waves of dust scattering across your face and peer through the amber murk. Your feet slide on shifting piles of sand. Welcome to Step. Or an emulation of it, at least. Aki's voice sounds distant, echoey. Okay, just put, put on a distant echoey filter on, on my... I can't, I can't do it. A terraforming process only managed to provide a limited atmosphere around the moon. One which is slowly escaping. Hmm. It's been like that since I was born, so I got used to the idea. You catch her bright eyes through the amber dust. 
So did everything else that lives there. You feel something hard beneath your feet, beneath the sand, like a coil of rope. Um, uh, I could look down, but I could just ask, what's under the sand? This is step silk. It's one of the plants we established on step. She kicks away some red sand. Like any bast fiber, it can be redded and woven into clothes. I'm wearing some made from it myself. It's one of the many species adapted to step since the Solheim collapse, which is why it must be preserved. She stares out into the swirling dust. It is as much a refugee as we are, and the dust houses hold hundreds of other species. You look at the pale, unassuming root, threaded thickly through the sand. Aki watches you silently. Bad enough. It will be easier to speak outside. Aki leads you back out through the decontamination tunnel, which blasts the dust from both of you with a burst of metallic-tasting air, and into the changing room. You have to go through the giant dryer before you're allowed to leave, man. Now you know how clothes feel. Minus the spinning, right? Ah! Well, maybe it's more like a giant hair dryer. <laughs> Aki hangs up both the masks, patiently awaiting your questions. Hmm. What happened on Ember's step? I already know why you brought the plants with you. Aki pauses, pulling her shawl around her. She looks small and pale inside its layers. Step was already a doomed world, she sniffs. When Solheim gave the terraforming contract to Cybel, they believed they could build an atmosphere. But the moon's erratic orbit made it impossible to maintain. By the time of the Solheim collapse, the atmosphere was already fading, and Cybel's attention was on Ember's hearth. After the collapse, Cybel fell too. Its researchers scattered across the moons, and any central organization lost. Since then, my parents' generation worked tirelessly to survive, to adapt what we had to the failing moon. The step silk, the other adapted species, are the life's work of the steppe's colonies. Though when the flux started to collapse our computer systems, corrode and destroy our life support, our water supply, our agriculture... We had to leave. Aki sits heavily on a nearby bench. Soon the only traces of step will be on this ship. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, I made her cry. I'm a villain, I made her cry, man. By bringing up what happened. How could I do this? How could I do such a thing? I'm a monster. I'm horrible. I'm terrible. Mm. Aki begins to cry quietly. You are unsure what to do. Uh, I demand you answer my questions while you're... Cr uh, let's just sit beside her. You sit on the bench beside her as she sobs. You understand why the ship, why the refugees from Step, are so different. Their world was already dying when the flux arrived. Ember Step is a terraformed moon, a partial atmosphere, established colonies, agriculture. And yet, when the flux events started, its people had to leave. You think of the eye and the delicate web of decaying systems it rests upon. What hope does a ruined station have against a wave that corrupts, corrodes, and collapses? <sighs> Aki interrupts your thoughts, rubbing her eyes. Not everyone left. There wasn't room to take all the people and fill the dust houses. My parents, their friends, and many others stayed. She sniffs. We carry the step for them. Hmm. Uh, um... Uh, the first one's kind of a uh, stab, stab, stab. Let's emotionally stab this lady some more. The second one's uh, very optimistic. Uh, 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 I'm going to stay quiet. <laughs> Aki stands. 
I wanted you to understand the importance of these dust houses, of what they contain. He leads you back out into the corridor. If the flux events continue to reach out to the eye, we need to build protections to ensure their safety. Aki meets your eye. What about the people? Aki looks away. We aren't idiots, sleeper. We chose to carry this burden. We will survive. These dust houses are already decaying. I have seen it. He stares into the dust. We had thought that they would last longer, but that last flux event. Help us. Aki looks at you. Please. Um, I'm a sucker for uh, for helping people in video games, so I will. When you are ready, we will begin the preparations for reinforcing the dust houses. We need to be ready for the next flux event. Eyes, Aki's eyes shine with the last of her tears. I'm. He takes a breath. I will see you soon. Aki drifts away down the corridor, leaving you alone once more at the viewing window, watching the ragged, delicate traces of the moon known as Ember's Step. Hmm. Do I get another upgrade se section here? Step Silk Care. Improving the dust houses isn't the only way to sustain the step, step silk. With intuitive care, the plant can be made more resistant. Or dust house shielding. Aki has devised upgrades that will protect the dust houses from both flux and their slow decay. She needs you to implement them. Reservation, huh? If the dust houses are to preserve their closed biomes, they will need shielding against the flux and protecting from their slow decay. I keep thinking, what? Just how bad iron deficiency? Oh. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know your situation, but I'm not. I, I like to take uh, multivitamins for stuff like that. I don't know. Who knows if those actually help or not? I've had people say multivitamins don't do anything. I still like to do it for a peace of mind, though. I give you lots of nutrients. I hope you get that figured out, though. Get the deficiency. You did too, and the shit doesn't work. God damn it. Man, I hope you get it figured out. No idea what. What foods are rich in iron or anything? I'm sure I'm sure you've done all the googling though. I'm sure you've done all the googling. I wouldn't say anything new that you haven't already googled. I hope you got it figured out the uh. steak. Ooh, I like that idea. Steak's kind of more expensive though. Ste steak every day. That one probably be like you can't have red meat every day. That's bad for your heart or something. Your arteries or something. Be like what? Don't deny me. Don't deny me my steak. It's tasty. <laughs> I bet you could beat this game tonight. Uh, I'm a slowpoke, so I doubt that. We're only in chapter two. Chapter three is probably going to be like eight hours long. Get real, right? Uh, I could go do the dust house one next, but I want to do this part. We're unloading this. Oh, right. There were no people here to unload this. Hmm. Uh, it's a red. Uh, I kind of want to use the best ones I can if they're going to be red. U use five or sixes. Uh, I guess that's all I'm doing today. Hey, Jacob. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Hmm. 
Oh, we're playing through Citizen Sleeper tonight. I think the mushrooms are done today. Alright, continuing in the, the DLC. We're in uh, chapter 2 of... I believe there's three chapters for the DLC. Someone comes to help you unload for a while, making the work go quicker. When you ask what their, their, their name, they ignore you. What's going on? Docking Axis, Ember Song Flotilla Hub. You think so anyway? Ooh, what'd you say? You bet I could beat this game tonight? Nope, I don't believe you. I told you I'm a slow book. If I'm wrong, I can ban you. Uh, rejected! Your motion has been denied. Been alright, just chilling on your birthday. Oh, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Wait, 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 wait. Where's my sparkles? I don't have confetti. It's the best I got. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Wait, I'm not going to do that sappy song. That's, that's, that's too sappy. That's too cringe. It's too sappy. I can't do it. Happy birthday, though. I hope it's awesome and amazing. You believe me? You believe yourself, then? So much so that if I'm right, I could ban you. Are you gonna ban yourself? Okay, I'll hold you to it then. Totally. There is a loose crowd around the supplies you have unloaded, and a tense mood brewing among them. You sit nearby on the edge of the shuttle's docking tunnel, resting. Further away, crews from Ember's Song continue their lives as usual. Coming and going. Trading. Discussing. There's a quiet efficiency to the hub, set up as a common space for the swarm of small ships from Ember's Song that are part of Flotilla. Unlike Hearth or Step, there is no one capital ship for this moon's refugees, just a mass of individuals traveling in concert. We told Huh? Hearing voice? Uh, okay, so just from random voice. We told Hearth we didn't want their scraps! The jeering voice comes out of the small crowd nearby. You turn to see a gaunt, pale man wearing the industrial work gear you have seen many of the song refugees wearing. You hear me? Pet R? I'm just gonna say that's Peter, I guess, without an extra E. Steely Ember Song Refugee. These supplies are to help! He smirks. Oh, how noble of you! Coming out here to help us singers! There's a rumble of anger around the crowd. We agreed to join the flotilla for joint protection. We did not agree to Ember's hearth using the flotilla to secure their control of the moons. You realize Peter is addressing the crowd as much as he is addressing you. With the cordon down, our crews are more than able to acquire what is needed from the eye. What is owed is restitution for keeping us restrained. He pats one of the crates you unloaded. What we need, we will take. So, um, he feels he's owed the stuff because, uh, he went through some harsh times. Is, is that what he said? So wants to cooperate? I have no stake in this. He's not gonna believe me if I say the first one, so I have no stake in this. And why are you delivering supplies for Hearth? Peter laughs. You need to check your alliances, sleeper. Alliances? I'm just trying to help people, man. There's no fucking alliance. It's your political nonsense out of here, boy. Peter looks around at the crowd. Her thinks they can buy us, but we remember the past. A rumble of agreement runs through the crowd. He smiles at them. Take the supplies if you wish, of course. We are not wasteful. <laughs> uh-huh. Peter approaches you directly. The crowd tentatively moves forward, and by the time he reaches you, they're already dragging away crates and distributing the contents. I'm not one for shooting the messenger, sleeper, says Peter as he approaches, but we cannot concede to Hearth here. Not for a moment. I don't understand why you being rude. I can see that, Peter sits beside you on the docking tunnel's lip. What was your plan, sleeper? Unload the supplies and wait for someone to start throwing them back at you? He nods at the crowd rifling through the crates. Because that's what was about to happen. Right. 
so I should thank you? Peter bows a little. My pleasure. I don't like this guy. What do you think happened to the crew of this shuttle? He shakes his head. They were chased out of this place. Why did they hate Hearth? We, Peter says with emphasis, do not hate Hearth. We simply do not trust them. Do you know anything about Ember's Moon Sleeper? Or were you planning to wander into this flotilla totally blind? An objective outsider offering help. He rolls his eyes. <laughs> Educate me then, smartass. He smiles. It would be my pleasure. I'm going to assume you know the basics. The gas giant Ember has seven moons. Three biggest are Ember's Step, Ember's Song, and Ember's Heart. He winks. We can cover the three sisters next session. Step was the first to be settled. A contract old Solheim gave to the terraformer Cybel Systems when they first claimed the Helion System. So, how would you pronounce that? System? System? Pokemon has that same thing. Po eh, 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 eh. I don't know how to do that diacritic mark thing. System? I surrender. That's way back when. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to pronounce names of things. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna be like, good luck. Whatever you get, whatever you get. Just like this guy is Peter. It could be Petter for all I know. You're Peter as far as I'm concerned, though. You'll get something out of tonight. Pressing X to doubt right now. All you get is a pro time. Take that. Step was testing ground, and like most testing grounds, it didn't turn out too well. A partial atmosphere slowly sloughing off each orbit, a dysfunctional ecosystem, and a whole load of dust-clogged settlers. The, the place is a miserable desert long past its best before date. So, Cybele moved hearth, or moved to hearth, where they redoubled their efforts. The subsurface ocean and some balmy tidal heating helped, allowing them to build a real atmosphere. A real habitable world. A fact that the typical hearth colonist won't ever let you forget. How did Cybele achieve such a thing, you might wonder? Well, that's where we come in. It's that same old rule of surrogacy. The one humanity built our universe around. Peter claps a hand to his chest in mock pride. My moon, Amber's song, is a sulfur-soaked rock covered in volcanoes, tidally heated by its inner orbit to sweltering temperatures. Exactly the kind of crucible you need to fuel a terraforming project. Energy, industry, fuel. Song provided the raw materials for hearth. Peter grimaces. Willingly or not. And a crucible requires people to run it. A singer's born into a flaming pit and asked to stoke it so others might live in a paradise in the making. That's what we had to endure. Until Solheim brought everything down... Peter rattles off this speech from memory, and you wonder how many times he has delivered it. No Solheim, no contract. No contract, no Cybele. And no Cybele means three moons suddenly independent. Peter shakes his head. It was a war, sleeper. Sometimes hot, sometimes cold. And unsurprisingly, Hearth and Step came out of it better than us. Yet, Peter holds up a hand. They need us, sleeper. Always have. And so we are the linchpin. We are the center around which the moons orbit. Not swirling ember. We've resisted takeovers, sieges, and expansions. And now we'll resist this. Half, of, half the people on these ships think the flux was caused by hearth. Intentionally or otherwise. And I have to say, some cycles I agree. But before you come here to hand out supplies like a good soldier... Maybe educate yourself. Um, what does that matter now? Peter shakes his head. Do you forgive crimes against yourself so easily, sleeper? Would you return to the bosom of S and Arp if they sent someone to collect? Peter stares at the crowd. Don't presume to judge us. I want to 
want you to imagine what it is like to try to live on an airless volcanic rock when every system that sustains you starts shutting down. Uh, I don't think you'd last too long. He spits and wipes his sleeve across his mouth. We abandoned nothing. Some stayed, others left. But we will reclaim Ember as soon as the flux fades or ends. We've weathered worse. Uh... Why would you want to go back to, the, to a rock that requires electrical systems to survive, though? Other than the sentimental, It's my home! I must go back to my home! What does that mean? Hmm. When I press X to doubt, it means I doubt the veracity of your statement. Please clarify. What you mean by getting something out of tonight? The flotilla should be united. He's not going to go for that one. Have you been listening? Peter's voice raises immediately. We don't want to be united, sleeper. Being united by hearth means living under them. I won't keep you from the docking axis, sleeper. No one here has the authority for that. But watch yourself here. Try to remember that the eye is just another in the long list of people who have tried to control us. Oh, uh, you're too stubborn. Stubbornness, I have found, is a quality in these times. Peter sighs. Look... We are many, and we have many needs. Ships come to this docking access for repairs, for requisitions, for friendship. You can provide these as well as any singer. If you want to help, help in your own name, sleeper. Not in that of Hearth. Peter shakes his head. Carry that name here, and you will lose all trust. Be as we are. Act in your own name alone. Peter puts a hand on your shoulder and stands. I hope I didn't just waste my time here, sleeper. And with that, he walks away, back to the shrinking crowd that is distributing the last of the supplies amongst the crew's present. You watch them pass the food and water between them. No signs of conflict between the crews. Just a careful distribution of resources. Peter chats with a few crews, each of them casting looks in your direction, ones that reveal little about the singer's intentions. You stand... It seems the tensions on the flotilla run much deeper than you expected. This won't be easy. Me. We got more things here. Supply spores. Ooh, I can do that. One of the ships is trying to establish a mushroom farm to help feed the crews. They are looking for spores to get them started. Ship mine replacement. One of the singer crews is looking for a ship mine to replace their flux damaged core. Maybe you can help them acquire one? Sure. We've got three spores right here, by the way. Here we go. The spores have been seeded, and while some crew may be suspicious of your efforts, crew by crew you'll convince them. So we're working on access supply here. As Peter said, the singers will only trust you if you act independently of hearth. Fulfilling supply requests is a good start. Well, let's go get a ship mine core. I don't like my two ones. What I got? Two fours? I like how they both change to the same number. What are the chances that you'd have two of the same number, you'd re-roll, and you'd get two of the same number? What are the chances of that? Where do I get ship mine stuff? Isn't that, there's an extractor or I could buy it or something. Oh wait, there this thing was making three? I needed three to make it here, right? I don't have any right now. Is this guy even here? I can. I can buy two. My cat! 
They're cute, aren't you? Looking for a thrill, a buzz, excitement. I bet you are. I don't really want to pay two forty for that. We got two mots Four percent, eighty four percent of what? That's some good dice. Whatever you were talking about, God damn it. Constantly growing more mushrooms. Spending the day over here. I only ever get one scrap component. How dare that? I don't have any time limited stuff right now, so there's no reason to rush to get everything done as fast as possible. How many days is it? Before those guys come back, you can buy the last piece. Eight days? Uh. I'll farm scrap for eight days. Let's do it. Actually, I probably don't need to worry about that. I've got club heads. What do I need to farm scrap for? Well, I guess I could farm it to keep myself at six all the time, but like I only need two to make stabilizer. Boom! Uh, there we go. I got four more stabilizers just like that. Mostly the mushrooms that matter. They keep producing my club heads to keep me alive. Yeah, we're waiting for that guy to study something. He's studying. He's studying. Never mind. Why you cry? Wow, look at those amazing dice. Is it the best one you've ever seen? This will work on the, uh... What's this pilgrim seed one say? Do -do -do. Yeah, work on the dust houses. Care for the step silk, trimming dead segments, feeding live ones. You start to understand its process and practices. Ooh, cool. Oh, well, that's better. You work inside a dust house, layering the internal walls with careful plating. The rattle of the dust becomes a comforting backdrop.
I'm gonna bother with the two. I think I'll just use it for energy. Negative outcome only plus one energy. Screw you! Snap box! Snap box! Snap box! Look at that beautiful one I got. Remarkable intuition. You not only support the step silk, but harden it. Aki smiles when she sees the results. There was no reason to pick the dangerous over the risky, it's sad to see what the text said. That's correct. I had the same uh the same predictive outcome supposedly. You notice there's different text depending on how well you do as well. If you get a plus one or a plus two or a plus three, it's a different text for each one. Which I find interesting. I did not notice that at first though, so I probably didn't read a lot of those. All I noticed on like my third or fourth stream of this game. I was like, wait a minute. The text changes when you input. I'm very observant lady. You and Aki stand side by side at the viewing window in silence. The dust swirls and you glimpse the twisted root systems of the step silk through the ochre haze. After all these cycles, you feel a strange connection to a world on which you have never set foot. Aki shifts from foot to foot. She seems restless, eager to speak, but unsure of what to say. <laughs> we did it. Aki smiles at you warmly. We did. She pauses and turns back to the window. What is the value of all this? She asks suddenly. Of preserving a world we have left behind. History, heritage, conservation. Oh, those are all kind of hand in hand, aren't they? Why do you care about preserving a remnant of your home? Heritage or conservation or history. I'll just go with heritage. Aki is silent for a moment. Our practices, our lives require the materials, the patterns that step provides. But if those practices remain unchanged while the universe around them shifts, aren't they already dead? He pauses. What is better, to preserve at all costs or to allow things to be destroyed by change? Aki paces away, lost in thought. I'm grateful to you for helping protect the dust houses, for ensuring their slide into decay is delayed, even averted. But now I find myself at an impasse. The stability of the dust houses changes things. It makes me aware of how blinkered we have been. Aki stops to look at you, her posture somehow different. If the ecosystems of Steppe, if its people, cannot grow to meet the future, why preserve it? He frowns. Are we just slaves to the preservation of what came before? Hmm. Hmm. Who can change? Aki comes close, holds her, your hands in hers. We must change. We must change to live. She smiles. I have seen that in you. The step. These people, this ship, should serve more than heritage, than history. They should serve the future. She takes a breath. There are those in the flotilla that need clothes, that need food, that can benefit from the gifts of the Steppe's ecosystem. I want you to invite them. Can you do that for me? Uh, how? 
I know that soul sent you, she smiles. You can tell him, Aki. Captain of the Wind's Long Shadow invites all of the people of the flotilla to come. Captain! She smiles. You never asked. Aki steps away. You want to know about the flux, no? About its purposes? Its origins? She smiles. You wish to protect your home as we could not. Uh, she's the captain of the ship. I never would have guessed that. Pew. Big, big revelation here. I'm mind blown right now. Pew. I'm afraid I don't have much to tell you. It is an exotic wave of sorts. An energy that passes through matter. It shifts the very charged particles which run through our electrical systems. It is possible to shield against it, as you would radiation. But as we have done with the dust as we have done with the dust houses, but only while it is weak. The flux event here was much like the first ones we felt on Ember's step. Localized, destructive but bearable. But in time its strength grew. I don't know if it will be the same here, but she pauses. It is coming from the center of the system, from the close orbit of Helion Star, H1. That is all we could uncover. She is silent for a moment, unsure of what to add. I'm sorry I cannot offer more, but you are always welcome on this ship. She smiles. I hope I will see you when the others come. She squeezes both your hands. I hope this ship, these dust houses, can be more than a museum. I hope they can become, or the, I hope, I hope they can be a home. I think cat. Probably not. You would have. She's clearly very captainly looking. Yeah, she looks like she's in charge around here, man. With this, she turns and leaves, and you feel that word, home, resonating within you like a struck bell. Ooh, we're done with the dust houses. So we gotta wait for our our ship mine fragment to make our ship mine core because I'm too cheap to fucking buy one even though I've got a bajillion dollars. We're waiting for that guy to finish doing his data anyway. What was that guy's name? Peek! Wow, I rolled a one. I got a one. Amazing. 10 out of 10. And it's like the fifth time that's happened. I roll a one, I get a fucking one. Hmm, you're very surprised by this turn of events, huh? <laughs> wow, amazing dice today. Let's see what Peek's got to say! Have you ever heard of Con Channel, Sleeper? He gasks as soon as you enter the bay, as if you were in the middle of a conversation. There are heavy circles under their eyes, and you aren't sure if they've moved since you last visited. The console they are working at seems to have grown, too, shadowing their slight frame and a wealth of screens and wires. Con? You mean for transit? Yes, exactly! Peek turns to face you. Kiyomani's active, active negation! The name of the effect used to transport trillions of tons of materials from the surrogate systems to the core. You might have heard of it in your physics classes. Nope. At XPR, they hammered the principles into us as kids. Khan. Peek recites the definition as if in the, cl if it in the classroom. A process of collapsing spatial causality along the Euclidean distance between two points by negating mass simultaneously at both ends of a geodesic curve. I need that in English. Essentially, con channels allowed for the near instantaneous transport of raw materials between systems. They require huge volumes of energy, of course, and decades of construction. But once a con channel is established, it opens up a system for infinite exploitation. The backbone of surrogacy is what XPR called them. Peek shakes their head. They might not be able to send any more thing more complex than a rock through them. Complex machines and people are shall we say, reconfigured by the process. But for raw, molecu molecularly pure materials? Peek flicks a hand. Whoosh! 
so it's kind of like a teleporting thing, but it only works for things that are simple in structure. If you try to do a person, they get all jumbled and probably come out as a big pile of slush on the other end, right? That doesn't sound like fun to me. I'll pass on that um, thing, man. Where is this going? Peek pauses. What I was trying to find out was whether the Helion system, this system, ever had a con channel. Con channels are vastly expensive to build, to run. Not every surrogate system has one. Many use fraction drive ships to transport their materials to the nearest hub. But Solheim... Peek smiles. Solheim spared no expense when they established this system. There's a con channel? Yep. Peek's eyes light up. They shut it down before the collapse, but they couldn't run the sender-receiver station anymore. But it was there. It still is, as far as I can tell. Closely orbiting our star. In fact, Pete grins, they've been building to this. Oh wait, they've been building to this. I'm sure it's still there, because one of the issues with con channels are the massive waves of exotic energy they can produce when cycling up. Uh. A flux! Exactly. Peek's face suddenly drops. Someone is starting up the channel. Why? Peek sucks in a breath. That, I don't know. They start counting off information on their fingers. They'd need a lot of resources to do it. And they'd need to have people from the core systems. But there's no real large-scale extraction in the helium system anymore. So why would you go to the trouble? Just to trigger the flux? He grubs their eyes, or their red eyes. The flux, the wave of the con, uh, the wave the con effect produces, is a side effect, a problematic one, but it isn't a destructive force. If it was, the core systems would have never been able to use it. Though so then why are colonies collapsing because of it? Why is it chewing through systems, the kind of industrial systems set up to function within the range of a once active peak channel? Peak is getting frustrated. The moons of Ember have been terraforming since before the collapse. They would have had to deal with the flux. Yet everything we have heard from the refugees says it brought down every system they had. Eek falls quiet, thinking it all through. Your mind drifts too, thinking of the con channels. Those vast, acausal, acausal? I could wait, 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 I need, uh, I need a dictionary for this one. What the fuck is this word? Excuse me, English. Why you be like this, English? How dare you have complicated words? How dare you do this? Wait, wait, so a casual? Wait, is that like the opposite of casual? Not casual? Wouldn't that be like formal? Oh, wait, not involving causation or arising from a cause. So it would be a causal then, right? What do you mean there's no, like, pronunciation from dictionary.com or whatever? All I've got are YouTube video pronunciations. The first one is, like, the fucking worst robot AI voice I've ever heard. But it's a causal, as I guessed. But a casual sounds way cooler. How dare they? You're thinking about what to do, of course, Brufflewink. I got my eyes on you, mister. Better watch out. Uh, where was I? Your mind drifts too, thinking of the con channels, those vast to causal highways that prop up the core systems and their endless appetite for resources. This system has been quiet for decades. Solheim collapsed, most corporations gave up their claims, and apart from the sealess ships that came to begin work on the side rail horizon, no one from the core has come here in all that time. You shiver as you imagine the attention of the core. The systems of logic and exploitation that created you, 
created your suffering, turning towards the Helion system. A floodlight turned to this dark corner. A shrill bleep catches both of your attention, and Peek rushes to a screen, one showing a crude map of the station. On it, individual markers begin to flare up with insistent chirps. Uh-oh, is there another phlox coming? Peek's Peek looks puzzled for a moment, and then their face drops. Oh, no, no. They lean in close. This doesn't make any sense. What's happening? The flux nodes are appearing elsewhere on the station. Peek pulls at their hair. I set the system to alert me to other flux nodes near the epicenter of the flux event. But these are everywhere. The hub, the low end, the shipyard. How can this happen? The only reason we saw flux nodes here is because it is the most run-down part of the station. They were barely shielded. But others appearing so far after the event. Eek turns to you. You are going to need to get me the data from these nodes, and quickly. I'll keep looking at what I have here, but I need to know why they are popping up everywhere. Right now? Right now. We can talk more about con channels and system history when you are back, but this needs our attention right now. He quickly turns back, or Pete pe turns quickly back to the monitor, their eyes following scrolling screens of code spewing from the newly flexed nodes. You leave quickly, but struggle to shake the image of the spotlight from your mind. You feel watched as you cross back into the pilgrim seed on your way to a shuttle bay. You hurry onward, eager to outrun the fear. Uh-oh. Now we need three flux datas. Eek has tracked flux nodes in the low-end hub and shipyard. They want the data extracted from all three. Dang it. They always want more work. It's never enough for these guys. No, I'll be high numbers, right? No, oh, wait. Hub, shipyard, low end. Those are all going to be the first area. What numbers do they want? Oh, really? Or else what? Uh, I didn't think that far ahead. They're always five or six, apparently. Yeah, it seems they're always five or six. Eek! What up, peoples? What what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? You certainly did. Did you know me? Let's see. What should we spend our dice on today? I can't get those flux nodes unless I get a good lucky roll. Let's go suck at the uh, getting scrap. Oh, I can get one node. Any on the greenway, right? Don't think so. The mush just going around Twitch. Ooh, that's cool. I'm playing through the DLC. I'm on the second DLC right now. Doing the cool story. This node is turned inside out, its skin writhing with distorted data. Interesting. Hmm. We must feed our cat. I haven't fed our cat in a bit. I'm sure the, the, the cat has other people to feed it to, though. Just one. 
I need more food. We'll come back to this guy's stall twice in one day. He'd be like, what the fuck? You that hungry, man? You have something in mind, Dolby? What might that be? What might that be? None of those are the right ones. Try again. Whoa! Much better. I can work with this. This node beats like a heart. The effect is unsettling. Where's the third one? Up the tower, probably. Just chilling on a bunch of channels. That sounds pretty cool. I knew it was up here. Oh. This one's different than the others. This node is in two places at once. It is there each time you turn. I guess I technically have the Y question mark because I didn't uh, get caught by Hunter 1200 times. So I didn't do all his stuff or something. I don't know. It disappeared for Hunter though. Or no, killer. Killer, killer, killer. No wait, hun Hunter down here, killer up there. Well, what am I going to do? Arm scrap, I guess. Oh wait, the mushrooms are done. Any more spores though? Gonna have to sleep. Very cool. That's right. I'm very cool. I'm very powerful. Wow. I'm very awesome. I'm super cool. That's right. Yeah, yee, yee. I'm down to three dice, huh? One of them's a four, so that's good. Ugh. Let's go get it. One more place to get food up here. So I could select it. Alright. Need to do three energy. I'm so generous. Da da da. You have something to comment on, Doba? Got something to say. Fight, 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 fight. Totally, totally not that. Wow, those amazing dice rolls there. It's the best I've ever seen. Two more days for that. Scrap mine time. Oh, I forgot to give the third flux node to the other guy. Is his name. He loads the data into their decoding setup. I'll just be a moment. Don't leave, sleeper. He watches Peak works on the flux data. The nodes unfolding like flowers now, giving in, giving in to Peak's increasingly sophisticated decoding protocols. Seeing data like this as an image on a screen, 
is an almost unrecognizable representation to you. It is nothing like swimming among nodes and threads. Despite this, Peak has proven themselves to be more than able to handle these complex data structures, even though this limited representational even through this limited representational paradigm. Whoa. The bay door hisses, interrupting your flow of thoughts. You turn to see Esh entering. Damn, I haven't we haven't seen her. I was beginning to think she was just going to be MIA from Chapter 2. I like watching, talking and watching Pokemon games. Oh! I haven't really played Pokemon in like forever. I played the first gen one. I had Pokemon Yellow. It was very exciting. But I haven't really played any ones after that. I've seen gameplay of them and stuff, but I haven't played them. I'm like way behind on Pokemons. I'll play Power World, but you just haven't bought it. Yeah, I haven't played that either. Maybe someday. I tend to play older games. I have a big backlog of a bunch of older games to play too, so I'm not in a big rush for all the new stuff. I'm a patient lady. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Rough days is just asking to get verbally slaughtered, man. Ash. He looks up and meets your eye, but doesn't respond. Ash stalks into the bay, head down. She looks tired and not in a mood to talk, so she wasn't able to get the explosives. How's the weapon hunt? Peek asks, without turning from their screen. Slow. Unsuccessful. Tedious. As she slams the bag down on a crate and hops up to sit on it. You still unpicking balls of yarn? With the sleeper's help, Peek smiles. They brought me some good stuff this cycle. Maybe they could help you finding the we maybe they could help you find the weapons you were smuggling? It's clear that Esh doesn't appreciate Peek's tone. Stay silent is the best choice. Peek holds up a hand. Shh! They lean in towards the screen. Son of a... What? They hid it in the wake of the wave. Peek is whispering to themselves. It's... it's alive. They lean back in their chair. Esh crosses over to look at the screen. Alive? Well, it's... growing. It's processing. It's quietly working away in the dark. Look! You cross over to the screen and stand beside Esh. In it you can see that Peak has all four nodes decoded, and the pattern of shadows from inside them sit on the screen like dark stains. Then you notice it. The movement. The thin threads cross from one stain to another. As you watch, you notice that the movement only ever happens in your peripheral vision, as if this thing, this shadow, knows it is being watched. This is how the other fluxed nodes appeared. Peek rubs their eyes. They weren't fluxed by the wave. They were corrupted after the fact. This thing, this shadow that entered in the wake of the wave. Oh damn, there's so, so many of this amazing word. It corrupted them. But it made the corruption look like the result of the flux. Uh-oh. It's a sleight of hand. Peek runs a hand through their hair. The flux wave is so massive... So complex that it opens up the systems to be attacked. As it reconfigures exposed systems, the sh this shadow is broadcast in, implanted inside. The wave from the con channel, it is a brute force way of hitting every system in Helion. Once the systems are vulnerable, Peek looks pale, their eyes reflect the screens. The flux isn't what is attacking the systems. It is the siege weapon, a Trojan horse. Then this thing takes over. Peek sits back in their chair. And it's already on the eye. Wait, wait, wait. Esh rubs her forehead. You are telling me there's a con channel in this system? Shit. Peek isn't listening. This is bad. We have to take this to someone. Peek looks desperately at you. Uh, Soul abandoned the system, didn't they? Wouldn't Helene more, make more sense? Or Helen or whatever. Is that wise? Esh cuts in. Haven Age haven't exactly made good decisions lately. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Go back to chapter one. They're the station administrators, Esh. Peek is desperate. They need to know. The argument rages between them, and as you watch them shouting, you feel sick. After a while, they stop, 
running out of things to say. An unsettling silence descends on the bay. I need more time, Peek says quietly. I need to look at solutions. Try to build a case. Collate the evidence. We mess this up? They look down at their hands. Esh goes to speak and then thinks better of it. Hee hee hee. Plenty of things, Dolby. Oh, really? Watched a lot of the anime, but only played Sword, Violet, and Unite, and Arceus. Ah, oh, there's a bunch of the newer ones. Yeah, you're a Pokeball lover. You're a Digimon fan, too. But you don't want to know that, who that is. I've heard of Digimon. It's uh, the other Pokemon. But it's like a digital world instead of uh, trapping them in Pokeballs. Powerful wink, man. Not a word, sleeper. Peek meets your eye. Don't tell anyone until they are ready. They sigh. With the tension among the refugees, Sol won't be ready to hear this. And Helene and Havenage are still mired in some kind of crisis. We tell Havenage they are likely to react badly. And if we tell Sol, I doubt he'll take it well either. If you can calm the situation in the flotilla, then we can choose. You are too twisted up in this peak. Esh says quietly. This is not our place. We don't owe... Stop, Esh. Peek slumps in their chair. Stop. You leave them like that, exhausted and troubled, and head back out into the Pilgrim Seed. When you close your eyes, you think of those shadows, that movement at the edge of your vision. Something dark, growing in the station like a parasite. You feel sick. Your vision blurs. What comes next? You stop in a corridor and take a breath, putting a hand on a rumbling metal wall. For now, the eye keeps spinning. For now. Oh my! Three upgrade points, huh? Hmm. Put them in there. Go oh, now. They don't continue the next part until we finish the ships. And two more days to get a ship mine core. I'm almost done with those. I just need to be patient. <laughs> Well, it's a good roll. Let's get the one other spore. Especially like Fusion, when they got took off Netflix. First Anime Tamers is good though. Ah! Grew up on Pokemon, Digimon, and Power Rangers, and a bit of the Avengers. Wow! Sounds like a very action-filled uh, scheduler. Let's go beat up the bad guys. <laughs> Hmm, when do I want to put in my stabilizer? I'd say when I get two dice. Probably tomorrow. Let's get our next batch of spores ready. Boom, there we go. Ow. I guess I'm at two dice already. I might as well go and the uh, stabilize myself.
Oh, wait. Is it today or tomorrow? Tomorrow, probably. Yeah, tomorrow for those guys. Do, 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 do. Might as well sleep in our old first home. The best home. What are the chances of getting five of the same die? Five of the same dice rolls. What are the chances of having five, five out of six of them? No, wait. There's not six, aren't there? There's always five. Four out of five of them. Well, the chance of having four out of the five be the same one. About 84%. Wait, what? No way. That's crazy. Not a chance. I don't believe it. Played a lot of Power Rangers Legacy Wars. I've never even heard of that. I've heard of Power Rangers, though. I'd say you owe Haven Age plenty if you're trying to get your own people into this colony. Uh, they're not her people, though, are they? They're from that XPR world or something. They just want to help these people. Maybe you won't finish this game tonight after all? I told you that! I told you I wasn't finishing this game tonight. Uh, we'll go ahead and buy another one in case I need to make another ship mine at some point. But I don't think that's going to happen, personally. It's her people, what, because she wants to help out? Wait! Oh, wait, let's get some more food. Phone game? Oh! Okay. I don't really play phone games. They all seem like uh, microtransaction filled gotcha games. <laughs> Not all of them, I'm sure, but a lot of them are. Wait, okay. So we're going to give off this uh, ship mine core. Here you go! You supplied the ship mind, but in a way it seemed to only make the crew more suspicious of you. Rip. As you cross the axis, looking for a shuttle to take you back to the ruined cordon, you spot Peter standing at the edge of the central hub. Something about the way he is leaning against the rail, looking down across the axis and towards the blinking lights of the flotilla beyond, makes you pause. He is completely still, his head drooping low and his shoulders hunched high. Well, I'm going to bug him, of course. You lean on the railing a little away from Peter, leaving a gap between you. This close, you can see the blank stare in his eyes, the way his hands hang limply in front of him. He takes a minute to notice you. Weeper! He inhales sharply. Still hanging around? Trying to be useful. Peter smiles a tight smile, but doesn't turn to face you. That a sleeper thing? Needing to be useful? It's a me thing! It would make sense. Peter closes his eyes. Tools need to be used. What's with you? Peter stands back from the railing. Who invited you, sleeper? Who said you could come here? You think because the Harthers decided to name you their errand boy, we have to put up with you? We didn't want you here. We don't need you. His eyes burn with rage. Go home, you stupid machine. A second after he shouts that final line, he collapses in on himself, staying upright, but all the energy going out of his body. He slumps back against the railing, his eyes closed once more. Damn, man, you okay? You seem to be having a moment right now. You wait. After a while, he speaks. I'm tired, sleeper. 
tired of everything. I'm tired of the empty paternalism of hearth. I'm tired of the paranoid whining of the crews. I'm tired of endless cycles that look the same, smell the same, feel the same. I'm tired of running, of hiding, of fixing every shitty thing that breaks out here. Damn. This guy needs a vacation. His shout echoes a little in the hub, but few stop to look. He looks down at his feet. Everyone is tired. Peter doesn't react. He stands. I'm going to go. He looks at you and sniffs. Get some sleep. Sleep well, he won't. Peter nods slowly, turning away. He raises a hand and drifts away towards the center of the hub. You turn back to the railing, not wanting to watch him go. Seeing him like this, you prefer not to stare. The traffic of the Axis rumbles on as you watch, under an endlessly shining sun. The same air recycled through all, these, all of these lungs. The same dust gathering speck by speck on the windows. You take a sharp breath, stand straight, and get moving, before the inertia of it all gets to you, too. Whoa! Whoa, I got some more shit to work on here. I take Clash of Clan away, take away, keep the castle, keep the carb, instead of the carter moves, and it's sideways, and that's it. Oh! Okay. Almost time for it, though, we... Uh, you didn't think I was serious about that, did you? <sighs> Axis job board. The Axis houses an overflowing job board of engineering tasks requested by the crews. You can help out here. Or... Crew socializing. The Axis is as much a social hub as it is a supply hub. Keeping good relations with the crews will help them trust your work. <laughs> Curious about what? About foam stars, of course. You have extra characters you can call in, too. Woo! They're both plus twos. Minus energy or money. You are taken under the wing of a riotous crew who give you the song-brewed spirit that burns like fire and leaves a lasting buzz. This is all for Axis assistance, by the way. The more work you do for the singers, the more you get to know the crews, the more they will trust you. Dot, dot, dot. I don't even know how many people are required to complete that, though. I haven't looked it up. And it's lost 95% of its player base. Probably requires 12 people. We'll be doomed, man. Doomed. You take a handful of jobs and work through them, sharing tips and chatting with the crews. You can feel them warming to you. Mm hmm. -hmm. They're both risky. What is next? Well, I was planning on doing red acting. Power Rangers characters, but for some reason Street Fighter characters too. I think it's a comic book thing. Street Fighters from another video game series. So like a crossover, I would say. There's a lot of uh, games that do crossovers. Of other series. Trying to get you to buy the things. That's what it's all about. Please buy our stuff. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Hmm, let's do this one and see what we got. 
You take on a complex drive repair job, which is both impressive, impossible and exhausting. The crew isn't impressed when you give up. Rip. Hee 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 hee. I'm gonna go rest and tackle that one tomorrow. See if I can get a neutral outcome for the different text. All I got was negative though. Downwall, burn house lane. What? Why does it have to be something new? Why can't I just play more F1 2013? Or something like that. Build those to see if Thieves close beta on PS5. I've heard that people have been waiting like two hours to get in the game. Sometimes, anyway. Up to two hours just to get in the game. You were taken under the wing of a riotous crew who will give you the... Oh, wait, I got the same thing. What? It wasn't supposed to be positive. It was supposed to be neutral or negative. Well, I didn't need to see the, what all the dialogue options were. Anyway. It's a beta. What did they want? I mean, a game that's been around for forever that should have 5 billion servers. Whisper mode. A game that's been around forever that should have about 5 billion servers. Killed all the others to clone them to make an army? What the fuck? True comic material there? That sounds like it. Sleeping tired? Oh, you have a good sleep, Pyro. You take care of yourself. You enjoy your time out too, by the way. Thanks for stopping by. Wop. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Head pass. That's right, that's right, that's right. Wait, wait, how am I supposed to whisper read this? Sleeper! Peter calls to you as you cross the access. He's standing by the same railing as you saw him as at last time, and he beckons you over. Yeah. Okay. I've been hearing things. He gives you a sidelong look. Uh, good things? Bad things? Stay silent. Good things? Peter smiles. Mostly? He rubs his hands together nervously. You wait for him to speak. You know, on song, I was a teacher. He glances at you, anticipating a response. Damn, you were a teacher, all right. You're a power ranger nerd and proud of it. Whoa! Can't go now, but might join back if you have time. All right, all right, all right. Take care of yourself. What's up? Oh, wait, what up? There's no S in there. What up? Take care of yourself. You get some good rest if you're going to sleep sometime soon. You to have a good rest of your day, night, whatever it is. Take care. Good time. Thanks for stopping by and chilling. Sharing the Power Ranger knowledge. Um, uh, I'm going to stay quiet about this one. Mechanical engineering. It's an essential subject on a moon where a single mechanical failure could mean the deaths of hundreds. Damn. He looks at the ground. The heat, the atmosphere, the radiation, all of it is hostile to us. Uh. My students knew this. Their work, their training, was respected. As long as they were careful and respected song themselves, they could have their choice of colony placements. They were always in demand. That meant I was respected, surrounded by friends and colleagues, always able to call in favors and repay them like for like. He frowns. Colony, small, the song colonies are small, close-knit. We look after our own. When the flux events started hitting, colonies went dark overnight. We all knew that those kinds of failures, or what those kinds of failures meant. Like always, we lost more people than any of the other moons. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Wait, how long's it been since Whisper Mode? Four minutes? I'm free! I'm free! He balls his hands into tight fists. Not a single one of my students left song. 
Oh, he's sad. Her future was cut off just like that. My future. My future, man. My future. He flexes his hands. What am I? What? What am I out here? What am I out here? What does that mean? Oh, well, what am I out here? What am I out here? What use am I? Song is a fading memory, and the systems we built there are useless outside its orbit. How am I supposed to move on from here? He looks at you, eyes steely gray and glinting. Uh, find someone to teach is a, not a bad suggestion. Peter pauses, thinking. You don't give up, do you, sleeper? You just keep going. Peter shakes his head. You remind me of a student of mine. One who entered the program from one of the smaller colonies. They didn't have the advantages of some of the others, but they were stubborn. Stubborn as hell. By the end of the program, they were the most skilled of their peers. They didn't get the best assignment. Maybe because they didn't spend much time making the kind of connections that would help you get you there. But that didn't matter. Because I knew they would make the best of anything they set themselves to do. Peter's smiling now. Buoyed up a little by memory. Singers are stubborn, sleeper. We aren't going to change easily. We won't forgive easily or take help easily. But we'll hold strong. You can count on us for that. Peter stands from the railing. When you see Sol again, you can tell him that. You can tell him how the crews of Ember's song operate. Tell him we will resist. If that means resisting Hearth's imperialist ambitions, so be it. If it means resisting the flux, so be it. And if it means to, as you have, help others resist those same pressures, so be it. Peter smiles. And then tell him to leave us alone. He turns, his step lighter, and heads off towards the center of the Axis's hub. Ew, apostrophe us. <laughs> that apostrophe s out of here right now get that out of here right now <laughs> anyway yes it's a beta what do you want i don't know i think i want the game who's had servers for forever that is running the worst it's ever had to maybe fix their fucking servers maybe it has cross progression though so if you if you got the playstation one it would uh you would just sign in with your same Microsoft account and you would, uh... Well, I, would, I would presume you would just pop all the trophies. If it works properly. Still, though, why, why would you pay money for another version? Oh, I know! Um, uh, wait, you don't have PS5. Um, you were, you were gonna double box it, right? <laughs> Holy. Wait, what am I doing now? Is it time for the choice? Soul. When you arrive at the bridge of the Pilgrim Seed, Soul is waiting for you. You wouldn't believe the messages that have come through in the past few cycles, sleeper. He smiles. The ship from Step has sent a goodwill gesture. A whole cache of supplies from their own farms. He smiles. I'm not sure how we'll use them, but the gesture is a welcome one. Song, meanwhile, are apparently accepting supplies again, although a little reticently, reticently, if I may say so. Soul smiles. I don't expect them to change anytime soon, it should be said. And what I'm wondering, Sleeper, is what part you had in all of this. Soul eyes you, waiting for an answer. I helped where I could. I've come to expect that of you, Sleeper. He smiles. You look at Soul, his eyes bright and eager, and wonder what he sees in you. Are you a tool to be used or an ally? It can be hard to tell. I want to show you something. Soul squeezes your shoulder, turning you to face the lift. He leads you along the axis of the ship, towards the engines, the clanking of his suit accompanied by the constant hammering and welding that fills the echoey bulkheads of the Pilgrim Seed at all hours. With the cordon lifted and shuttles able to go out to salvage scrap and barter for supplies, the ship has become a place of transformation moving towards some state yet to be revealed to you. You look at Sol. What is his plan here? What is he preparing the pilgrim seed for? Or are his sharp eyes simply focused on making it through the next cycle? Suddenly, Sol stops in front of a huge bulkhead door. 
like the seal on the front of a dry dock hanger. He signals to someone in a cabin high up, attached to the wall, and they begin the process of opening it up. A pilgrim seed was built as a short-range freight carrier, you know? The amber warning lights in the bulkhead door send spinning shadows across Sol's face. We built it to ship the entire harvest from thousands of farms to the silos at Passero. When we realized we'd need to leave, it was the biggest ship we could muster. Sol wraps on a metal plate. And somehow she's carried us all the way out here. <laughs> we? Farmers, mostly. From outside the city and the edges. He flexes his shoulder beneath his suit. We saw it coming first, I guess. Knew it was time. Others didn't want to believe. I was a farmer. Had a whole load of land and people to run it. And my people helped convert this place for the long trip. He looks at his feet. Others led, organized the evacuation, and debated the plan. What happened? Not one of those folks made it. Sol rubs his forehead. We were out in the black a long time before we got here, sleeper. Things happen. The upshot is that is I was chosen to take over. I guess my crew trusted me, and I knew the ship. I argued, reminded them I'm no leader, and that I'm sick. But, well... When service chooses you. A loud klaxon sounds, indicating the bulkhead doors are ready to open. They groan as they slide back, the metal squeals echoing through the vast ship, bouncing off its hard-plated walls. At first, all you see is darkness. Then the lights go on, in huge strips that stretch back and far as you can see. The space in front of you, a vast bay, bigger than any you have ever seen, is empty. When we left Hearth, we didn't have the time or resources to convert the entire ship. Sol begins leading you into the massive space. So much of the freight space we sealed away. Shut down. But now we have time. We have resources. We stabilized here, at least for the moment. Sol turns to you. Now is the time we make use of all this. What are you planning? What do you think happens next for the eye, sleeper? Sol sighs. The flux has already hit one part of the station, and from what I know, it'll hit again. On hearth, we lost everything. There isn't much time, sleeper. But there is enough time to do something. Think of the number of people we can fit on here. The farming stacks, the housing, hell. We can plant some of those mushrooms you love so much. This is the way forward. The only way. We need to fill this ship with able bodies and head for the Starward Belt. I thought the eye was your destination. It was, until the flux hit here. Now it's just another stop. I'm glad of the chance to resupply and salvage, but we need to go further out. I want you to help me. You know the eye. You have connections. And you can work hard. I've seen it. Soul meets your eye. I know you are like me, sleeper. You didn't choose service, but it chose you. Hmm. There are other ways. Oh, I don't like dealing with the flux. If you know them, go ahead. But I'm telling you, this is the opportunity we have now. I know it's a lot to think about, sleeper. Trust me. More F1? I didn't know you were into comedy. Yeah, I'm a comedian. I'm a real stand-up. Soul begins to lead you back out of the bay. But think of what we can do here. The flotilla can't last forever. We need more than just farmers to make this work. We need to build a new world for ourselves. I've heard that out there in the belt there are people who've been setting up since the collapse. Mark making something of their own. That's our future. Tucked away in those rocks. Far from all of this. Soul sighs. I didn't bring my people here just to let them die somewhere new. Bill crosses back over the threshold of the bay and signals for the operator to close it up. The door groans and Sol waits for it to stop. Think about it, sleeper. Sol claps an arm on your back. But don't wait too long. This is happening soon. 
and he leaves you there in the silence of this vast bay, your head spinning with the thought of leaving the eye. Is it time to get a new decision? Leave or stay? Just like all the other games. Decisions, leave or stay. Stand up, funny. Yeah, you caught that? I'm not funny? Aren't I a genius? Oh, that's the end of episode two. Episode refuge complete. Once you send the data, episode purge and the final series of events on the eye will begin. After this point, you will not be able to return to complete other drives or find other endings. Make sure you are ready. Uh, what? What? It's a final, final ending, then. I don't go back. Wait, so wait. Y uh, that ba Doesn't that kind of spoil it, in a way? That means they, they don't stop it or something? They don't stop the flux and they have to leave the eye? Just saying you can't return afterwards is kind of a spoiler. Why not? Why wouldn't you be able to return? Either the game forces it to end... Or, 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 or the eye blows up. Or something. Gathering evidence. Peek is compiling their data on the flux to be presented to Sol or Helene. You get the sense they are dreading the choice. Please, let's face it, the flux is in the system. Yes, you also, who has ours to go, to, to go into the system? But clearly, it's gonna blow up the ship. Why, why would the game just end? If we save the day, we should be able to just farm money in post-game if we want to and just chill. Obviously. What do I want to do the rest of this day? One upgrade points. Who do I want to give that data to? I'm leaning towards Helene myself. She makes perfectly logical sense. You have... I have to go into the... Go stop the whoever put in the evil virus. Oh, I didn't realize the mushrooms were done. Well, it's time to go sleep, though. Oh, wait. Wait, so you go in and purge the flux? Or you do nothing to call these purrs? <laughs> right after wrong, you ban me. You've been, you're, you're on that today. It's like the third or fourth one today. You okay, man? Getting in early since one plot next week. Until what's happening next week? That bother shit you can ban me? No! Let's do our last batch of mushrooms. Exactly, nothing's happening next week. So I have to get it in now. Let's see.
Hmm, oh wait, one more die. Let's get dinged here. Yeah, it's pretty tough to actually succeed at that one. With a low dice in the world. Seems to have a higher chance than most of getting negative outcome. Nothing's happened next week, so I have to get it out now. Let's see. Suspicious stare. I'll be now very exciting things are happening next week. We'll be playing lots of video games like we did this week. Unless the meteor strikes tomorrow. Oh wait, I gotta go to sleep. I can go to the next day. Sleeping dogs. Sleeping puppy dogs. Sleeping puppy dogs. Sleeping doggos. Wearing resting hot balls. Oh. Sleeper! Peek is waiting for you in the corridor. It's time! Peek looks pale and disheveled, with heavy marks under their eyes and strands of hair sticking to their face. For what? Peek smiles weakly. Nice try, but we can't dodge this. He holds up a thumbnail sized drive. All the data I have compiled on the flux event, the effects of the wave, and the structures that hide within it, is on here. We look at the tiny drive, a casket of dark secrets. I've annotated it to the best of my ability. Anyone should be able to understand the threat, the potential in this. Eek sighs. It makes for grim reading. Without intervention, the eye will suffer a cascading collapse of systems, just like the colonies of Ember's moons. Intervention? Eek grimaces. That I'm still working on. Eek looks at the drive. This shadow in the flux, this protocol, is so hard to pin down. It adapts to any countermeasure I have tried to deploy. It is like trying to hold water in a cage. It slips straight through. There has to be a way. Eek closes their hand around the drive. We need help, sleeper. This is about everyone on this station. They sigh. We have to set up a meeting to tell someone who can do something about all this. Stay silent, Tom. Or perhaps, Peek adds thoughtfully, we've been thinking about this all wrong. Peek's eyes glint. I make a choice when we can tell both of them. Why pick a side when the only side in this entire thing is the one we all need to take? Peek speaks as they think, their words barely keeping pace with their thoughts. We need to resist this together or we will fail. We need to do we need everyone on board, sleeper. Peek smiles. That is the only way. We need we send the data to both. That's what I was wondering. Why not just do both? You are right. Peek smiles. I'm glad you see it too. They look away. they look away. Another flux event is coming. I'm sure of it. And I'm not sure I'm not sure we can survive without help. Eek opens their hand and holds the drive out for you to take. You need to do this, sleeper. I can't. You know Sol. You know Helene. They trust you. To them, I'm just another spacer. But you are a part of this place. Hearing someone else say it hits you hard. You are part of the eye. Peek is right. But right now, that feels more like a weakness than a strength. I have set up a data relay at the cordon. It's neutral ground. Take the data and send it out to Haven Age and the flotilla. Once they receive it, they will come. We can be sure of that. You will meet them there and take them through it all. No one could do a better job. They tuck a strand of hair behind their ear. Come with me! Stop being shy. Eek pauses. I can't. It would only draw suspicion on you. Haven Age want nothing to do with us, and Soul is paranoid at best. Eek tentatively puts a hand on your shoulder. Thank you, sleeper. I know this is hard, but we have to move forward. We can't keep this to ourselves anymore. 
I step back, looking thin and pale in the harsh station light. Come talk to me once it's done. And they slip away into the eye. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wait, what? A cordon. Haven Age Quarantine. Warning, final episode. The second part of the flotilla story is complete. Episode purge. The final episode will begin when the clock below is completed. Good luck. A warning! They gave me a warning, man. A warning! Then flux data. Wait, do I have flux data? Oh, it gave it to me. A flickering, shifting fragment needs to be carefully decoded. I thought he gave me a hard drive. Or like a thumb drive, flash drive. He apparently gave me five things. Well, are we ready to start this final episode? Are, are, we, are we ready for it? All right, next game. He's like, no, I'm not ready. Let's go to the next game. about another hour of the time left though. I can totally do this last chapter. <laughs> I don't see the point of starting from this point. You'll have maybe 30 minutes. That's what I think too. Unless they suddenly make me help a bunch of people again. Ash was pretty much MIA for the second episode. I expect that explosive to come at some point. If they don't bring it up at some point, I'm just gonna be like, what? What was that all about? Was it just an excuse to Ash to be an MIA in the second chapter? Peaks Relay lies ready. This is it. This data is a ticking time bomb. Once it is sent, there is no going back. Peaks Relay pings a confirmation. The data is sent. Now all you can do is wait for the response. Cord iron, huh? With the data sent, the only thing to do is wait. As you do, you imagine Helene receiving the data, perhaps in the middle of some Haven Age Council meeting. You think of her trembling hands as she slips out of the room to read it. Her reaction, you can't predict. You imagine Sol, too, one of his crew, finding him in some corner of the Pilgrim Seed, overseeing the modifications that will turn it into an arc. Those sharp eyes scanning the data, looking for a way to proceed. The wait draws out, and to pass the time you watch the activity beyond the edge of the eye. The scrap shuttles pulling components from the now abandoned cordon, and the supply sh skiffs making runs between the flotilla ships. It isn't long before you hear the chirping of one of Helene's now familiar drones approaching the viewing platform, and then Helene herself str strides into the room. Where did you get this sleeper? Helene holds up a slate scrolling with streams of flux data as she enters. I need to know your source. Um, um, a friend? You seem to have a lot of friends, sleeper. Helene raises an eyebrow. But I need this data authenticated. I can't just... She pauses and pushes her hair back out of her face. This is a lot to take in. A shadow protocol inside the flux. The system's con channel starting up. A total collapse of the eye. He rubs her forehead. If I bring this to the council, they'll... She turns away. They'll believe you. Actually, I don't think they will. She laughs. Do you know what has been happening with Haven Age Sleeper? She looks away, out of the flotilla. Since the refugee ships started arriving, things have changed. It's chaos. No one can settle on a single issue. There is division at every vote. But in the division, only one group prospers. The Hardliners. Because as each counselor gets tired of the arguments, gets tired of compromise, they become more attracted to the easy answers. The flotilla is to blame. The refugees are opportunists. The eye must be defended. She shakes her head. 
And now you are telling me they brought something to the eye that will cause its collapse? <laughs> they didn't bring it. It doesn't matter, sleeper. That is all the counselors will hear. She closes her eyes, a hand to her temple. Many of them already presume that the refugees are somehow to blame. Did someone say refugees? Soul clanks into the docking bay, grinning at the situation. Speak of the devil, and well, here I am. His suit hisses as he settles on his cane. Blaine glances between the two of you, uncertain if she has been drawn into some elaborate plan. Soul holds out a hand to her. Soul, he nods. I believe we have spoken remotely while the cordon was still up. I sent both of you the data. Soul laughs. Well, thank you. He raises an eyebrow. Evidence of our mutual inevitable destruction is not much of an olive branch, but I'll take it. I'm not Haven Age, Helene blurts out, then corrects herself. What I mean to say is no one person represents Haven Age. That's the idea. I did not support the cordon, and I did not support your quarantine. Soul nods. Well then, Soul glances at you. Anyone mind if I get myself up to speed here? He pauses, but you get the feeling he isn't expecting an answer. One, the flux events, the very same destabilizing waves that collapsed the colonies on the moons of Ember, have reached the station. He holds up a stubby finger. Two, according to Haven Eight, or according to the data Sleeper provided, these events are acting as a cover for some kind of intrusive protocol which is causing the real damage. The second finger joins the first. Three, the shadow protocol will do the very same thing it did to Ember's song, Step and Hearth. And quickly. In short, it'll shut down everything keeping this place alive. A third finger pops up. Or, and this is my favorite. We have no idea who or what is doing this, and why. Soul's final finger joins the other three. Is that about the total of, all, of it all? Oh no! We don't! Are we gonna spend this final... This final episode has to be like five hours long though. We have to track down who did it. It can't be as short as the other two. It has to be super long. We need to have a big, long, thorough investigation. Maybe the awful character will die. I'd be too, um, too optimistic. Not bops! Fang? After all we did to help him? No! It is interesting how he's just M.I.A. though. You basically have Peek, the same type of character. We should have been like, hey, Fang can help you. Two, two dudes who are pretty much the same occupation. Good at looking at code and stuff. But he's not brought up at all. It's like, kind of weird. Everyone basically has their own story. No one really mixes with anyone else. Ah, <laughs> oh, my ball. There's also another flux event coming. Of course there is. Soul smiles thinly. Sounds... Helene pauses, searching for words. Intimidating. Helene turns to Soul. Did you manage to put up any kind of resistance on Ember's hearth? Sol shakes his head. That's why we are here. The Pilgrim Seed was the biggest ship to make it out unscathed. He pauses. I suppose we didn't have this data. We didn't know that what was eating up the systems. We all thought it was the flux. Helene looks at you. And I imagine you, Sleeper, and whoever helped you uncover this, might be able to figure out a countermeasure. We can try. Helene nods approval. Okay, so that's the start of it. If you'll forgive me, Sol cuts in. Part of why I was able to save as many as I could on Ember's hearth was that I gave up hope early. Sol shifts his weight, his suit hissing. There were endless strategy meets, system reboots, tests, and trials. But I just got on with working on the Pilgrim Seed, with getting people on board. So when the second and the third and the rest of the flux events hit... We were ready to go. So, if I can offer you some advice, Miss Not Haven Age, it is to give up on that line of thought you have. 
that hope and to start the evacuation now. Right this cycle. Sol looks out of the observation deck towards the pilgrim seed. I've already started the process of converting the remaining volume of the pilgrim seed for human habitation. With Haven Age's resources, I dare say we could finish the job with time to spare. Sol scratches at his beard. I know it's hard, and I know it's sudden, but you have to give up hope. We have to run. There will be no heroes here, just those that keep living and those that don't. Eileen listens in silence, making calculations. She looks out at the bulk of the pilgrim seed, which, despite all its vastness, is dwarfed by the eye as a whole. Something flickers in her eyes. She opens her mouth to speak. She stops, frozen. Let me think. Eileen rubs her temple. I need a moment. Eileen paces, and as you watch her, you realize how young she is, and how lost she is in the systems and protocols she has to navigate. You can almost see the strings and ties that bind her, glinting like webs in the wide space of the observation platform. What? 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 We, we, we purge the shadow protocol, or we evacuate the eye. The gardener, he released you. Make for the best blossom and it wants you. Aww. Hmm. This one sounded like you don't go don't come back if you pick the wrong ending or whatever. I don't know. The second one would be the leave ending. The top one is the one we should do, right? Fight back. Matter the eyes and actual character. Well, there are a lot of programs on the eye, right? What do you think's gonna happen to all of them? What do you think's gonna happen to vending machine that turned into a navigator? What do you think's gonna happen to Gardner and the, the rest of the court? If we abandon the eye, they all doomed. They all go to sleep and die. Ah! Well, I guess die as close to, as a machine digital thing can die anyway. Getting shut off. What's up, huh? Have we fed that cat lately? <gasps> Have we fed that cat lately? I fed that cat like uh, 20 minutes ago. I'll go over there. It just eats my crackers and doesn't say anything else now. Nothing's up. Hmm. Well, I'm looking up right now. It looks pretty cool up there. I approve. I purge the shadow protocol! Elaine stops pacing. But with what resources? The data you sent me. This thing is a shadow. Uncontrollable. Untraceable. Perhaps with the full contingent of the Haven Age Systems Department, but that would require hundreds of work orders to be overlooked. Maintenance schedules abandoned. She looks away. Well, those are going to get abandoned anyway when you all fucking have to leave the ship. Or leave the eye. She looks away. Getting that through the council, would that even be possible? She glances at Sol, who is patiently watching. Patiently listening. Uh, hmm. We do it without them! Fuck those people. Impossible! Helene looks at the slate again. I will take this to the council. Force them to listen. Force them to act. You both jump as someone loudly clears their throat nearby. Your eyes jump to the dark entryway that Helene emerged from just minutes ago. Who the fuck are you? Hardline Haven Age Counselor? Oh, Kemp. What a cozy little meeting this is. A man steps from the shadows, dressed in the same style of Haven Age overalls as Helene. And I must say, that is some very incendiary rhetoric you are using, Counselor Helene. 
I glance at Helene and her face drops immediately. Camp! She curses under her breath. Sol shifts his weight on his cane, but otherwise remains still, like a casual observer. Fighting against Haven Age with an interloper, he gestures at Sol. Everyone will be so disappointed. Kim smiles a bright smile. Some of our counselors had such high hopes for our youngest member. His smile drops. I, of course, never let novelty distract from the importance of experience. Eileen stares daggers at Kemp. Enough of this petty shit, Kemp. You need to see this. She holds out her slate with an outstretched arm. The games are over. No more point scoring. No more lobbying. You and your hardliners need to stop. This is something real. Kemp calmly takes the slate and prods the screen, scrolling through the flux data. His face betrays nothing, but you see some complex calculation flickering in his sharp eyes. Kemp lowers the slate slowly and smiles at Helene. And what do you think this shows? Helene frowns. Don't play games. You can read. The flux is a carrier signal for some shadow protocol. Most likely corporate in nature. Maybe it's Solheim re-emerging to claim their station. Maybe it's a takeover. But either way, the station is under threat. You are right about that. But the rest? Conjecture. Keb rubs, rubs his chin. Fuck this guy. Can we, can we throw him off the station? What we have is a virus in our systems which emerged precisely when the flotilla arrived. In fact, it, in times, it times in perfectly with the mysterious event that freed them. Now what I see is a hostile cyber warfare attack instigated by dissidents that fled Ember's moons after committing terrorist attacks on their own soil. Kemp's face darkens. That is the order of the facts. Nothing more and nothing less. Facts I'll be happy to present to the council. Kemp tightens his grip on the slate. Elaine laughs. You think that's the only copy of that data, you sanctimonious shit? <laughs> Uh-oh, they're fighting though. No, I don't. Kemp smiles. But who do you think they will listen to, Helene? Especially after I tell everyone about this little clandestine meeting. You couldn't win power by Haven Age's systems. By our laws, you resort to this. Kemp shakes his head. The law is with me. It is as simple as that. He gestures, and out of the shadows, two Haven Age security officers appear. No, no, no need for that. Sol suddenly speaks up. His silence had meant Kemp had stopped paying attention to him, but now you notice he has backup of his own. A group of his crew stand at the edges of the room. They are carrying long, boxy guns. You've never seen anything like them on the eye. Glossy XPR logos glint along their barrels. These are Esh's guns. We found the weapons! We found the weapons! Oh, we found the weapons! We should go tell Ash we found her weapons. No, we shouldn't. Um. Kemp freezes and the officers hesitate, holding back in the doorway. I mean, it'd be pretty tempting to shoot him anyway. He's kind of a dick, you know. He's just trying to consolidate his own power. And yet he's accusing Helene of trying to gain power. But it's not like he's not doing the same shit. Be careful there, outsider. He stutters. Kill me and Haven H will never forget. Bill waves a hand at him. No one is killing anyone, so let's calm down. Sol scratches his beard. But I am going to have to ask you to leave. Helene glances at him, and he gives her a gentle nod. And you'll leave your colleague here with me. He raises an eyebrow. We haven't finished our conversation. Imp laughs and shakes his head. You are finished, Helene. The council will never allow you back after this. Then he turns and walks out of the observation deck, taking his officers with him. Bitch. You all pause to catch your breath. Helene looks ready to collapse. Sol flexes inside his suit, nodding at his crew to check that Kemp has fully retreated. 
I'll wrench his part of his suit back into place. Grimacing. Your friends leave a lot to be desired. He shoots a glance at Helene. Seems like a support for the evacuation might be a hard ask. Helene doesn't respond. She stares out at the pilgrim seed once more, trying to process what's in front of her. She sighs and turns back to you both. I won't call for an evacuation. She looks at Sol. Maybe that is a fatal mistake, but I can't do it. I understand. But... She pauses. I won't block it either. If people want to leave, Haven Age will let them. That is what I will propose to the council. She sighs. If they let me speak. You have to try. She nods at you and Sol and turns to leave. Sol is quiet. He scratches at his beard. Good luck, he offers to the departing Helene. But she does not respond. He leans on his cane. I'll be honest with you, sleeper. None of this changes anything for me. The pilgrim seed will be going in a handful of cycles, whether Haven Age wants it or not. How long? Soul grimaces. Honestly? As soon as we are ready. I'm not eager to run down the clock to the last cycle. Soul puts a hand on your shoulder. There's a berth for you, and for any you can gather, sleeper. That much I owe you. And Helene? I wouldn't hold out much hope of her coming around, sleeper. She's too tied up in all this. It won't let her leave even if she wants to. He eyes you. Hell, I'd say the same about you, but you have a habit of proving me wrong. My crew will take me up or will take me from here. Don't you worry, Soul straightens up. Oh, and thank you, sleeper, for sending the data. I appreciate the extra info, and I'll see if it can help us shore up this pilgrim seat against any future flux events. If we if we had you back on Ember's hearth, he pauses, suddenly losing his appetite for discussing the past. Thole sighs. Of course, we are going to need all the help we can get. If you can spare us some time, come to the Pilgrim Seed. Help me get it ready. Bring others. There's a future to be earned here, cycle by cycle. We will be leaving as soon as we are able. If you want to help us get there faster, well, you'd be welcome. He meets your eye. So grimaces. Well, he pauses. Just don't keep me waiting. And he limps off towards his waiting crew. You pause for a moment to let your thoughts catch up. Peek will want to hear about all this. They should be your first port of call. Wow! Mm-hmm, hmm. Pilgrim prep, birth refitting, building births into the vast bulkheads of the Pilgrim Seed is a huge job, and Soul needs every able-bodied engineer to help. Or supply hauling. The evacuees will need many supplies for the trip to the Starward Belt, and they will have to be hauled aboard in only a few cycles. <laughs> Pilgrim prep, the Pilgrim Seed will take the majority of the evacuees off the eye, but is there enough time to settle them all? I don't see a clock, but okay. Talk to Peek. Oh no, I didn't want to talk to you. I wanted to talk to Peek. I found your fucking weapons. What am I talking to you for? All you are is grumpy. She's just grumpy. As you enter the climbing briar, you immediately have to jump aside as Esh, lugging a massive crate across the cargo bay, pushes past you. Grunting an apology as she does. Wait, is she 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 apologized? Why'd you do that? Wait, I wasn't talking about you, Dobu. You know I was talking about Esh. Grunt back. Reminds me of when we met. Esh sniffs and doesn't look back. As you turn back to the bay, Peek pushes past too. Sorry, sleeper. Just a second. Peek rushes to catch up with Esh. Put that down, please, Esh. But she doesn't respond to their urging. We can't leave. Not yet. Peek puts a hand on her shoulder. Please, I'm the only one here who can... The crate drops, the sound of its impact echoing around the bay like thunder. Can do what, Peek? Her eyes are burning with anger. Save this place? Are you still that naive? We are running, Peek. We are running because this thing cannot be stopped. 
It couldn't be stopped at XPR, our home. Why would we stay to stop it here? Because we can, Ash. We can give these people a chance. He pleads with her. Like they gave the refugees a chance? Ash shakes her head. No, Peek. This is not on us. We barely made it out of XPR. I worked for years to escape, but now you want to throw it all away? I left everything behind. My mother, my friends, to take you out of that place. She clenches her jaw. Hi. Oh. She turns and slams her hand onto the crate, breathing hard. I feel so bad for her right now. We go. That's the end of it. I, I, I feel so bad for her right now. Peek turns away. You feel unsure what to do, but you know now is not the time for outside arguments. This is between them. He crosses the bay back towards you. I'm sorry you had to see that, sleeper. They sigh. Let's talk upstairs. Peek leads you to the entry ladder, taking you up out of the bay into the habitation level of the ship. You follow them through the tight corridors, noticing the handwritten notes, the clutter, the repairs, the signs of a home. Air, sit. Peek gestures to the broad mess table with its curved couches and you slide in on one side. Peek sits opposite. They brush their hair out of their eyes and take a deep breath. Oh, how did it go? What did they say? I've been waiting all cycle. I can't, why don't I tell them about all the things? How about Helene first? Peek listens nervously as you explain how Helene said she will support your efforts to find a countermeasure for the Shadow Protocol. Okay, okay. Peek looks pleased. That sounds good. Much better than I was hoping. But what about the Council? Are they behind that? Or will she operate alone? Time to tell you about that rude parcel. Peek looks increasingly troubled as you tell them about, about the hardline Counselor Kemp's sudden appearance. Damn. Then Helene's going to have problems of her own to deal with. Peek shakes their head. Looks like we won't be able to count on anything from Haven Age. They pause. What stopped Kemp from arresting her? Tell them about the guns! Peek rolls their eyes. Of course. Those are the guns Esh managed to smuggle through to the refugees. The ones she didn't tell us about. Peek sighs. Another thing that's on us. What's on us? Esh is standing quietly in the doorway listening. You don't know how long she has been there for. Peek looks up at her with tired eyes. Sleeper found the weapons you smuggled from XPR. Esh freezes. She glances between you and Peek as if, as if this might be some elaborate joke. The flotilla used them? Esh moves out of the doorway and enters the room. What happened? Peek interrupts. Be thankful that they didn't. They used them as a threat. That is all. Good. Esh folds her arms. You get the feeling that she knows Peek will not approve. Peek goes to speak and then decides not to take the bait. They glance at you. I'm sure you've heard enough of us arguing this cycle, sleeper. Peek shoots a look at Esh. But our introduction of those weapons into the equation are just another reason why we cannot simply run away. Esh looks away, but says nothing. She surely knows they cannot absolve themselves of responsibility here. So what is motivating her? You realize that she still might not be trying to protect Peek, even from themselves. Suddenly, a shrill beeping fills the room, and as Peek pulls out their slate to silence it, and Peek, but as they do, they freeze, their finger hovering above the screen, the beeping continuing its insistent pulse. What? Peek doesn't seem to hear you. They blink with glazed eyes at the slate. Then they let out a long exhale and tap the screen. The bleeping shuts off, leaving a ringing silence behind. Esh frowns at Peek. Planning to explain? Twelve cycles. Peek looks vacantly up at you both. Twelve cycles until the next flux event. They shake their head. I've been using the arrays on the briar to look towards the center of the system, to approximately where the con channel should be. Just this moment they detected a signal from the inner system. Given the distance and patterns of previous flux events, we have twelve cycles before it reaches the eye. The silence in the room is deafening. Twelve cycles. That's it, before a second wave hits in this place. Peek interrupts your thoughts. We start now. That's the end of it. Peek stands up to face Esh. You want to take the briar and run, Esh? That's on you. But I won't do it. 
I take a deep breath. I'll be here, sleeper, for every cycle it takes, trying to find a solution. I'll need your help. Their eyes meet yours, and you see a wild desperation flickering there. We will find something. The sooner we have a plan, the better. If it takes us 12 cycles to fix this thing, it'll be too late. Peek's eyes flash with determination. They reach for a slate and pass it to you, so we can keep in touch. You pocket the thin, handheld terminal. And Ash? Peek starts, but she is gone, storming down the corridors of the ship on a path to who knows where. You know from experience that it is impossible to outrun your fears, but you get a sense that Esh will try anyway. Peek rubs their red eyes, staring after Esh. Maybe I'll take a moment before we start. They smile weakly, tears of exhaustion gathering in their eyes. See you back here soon, okay? Oh no, we got a time limit now. And you slip from the room into the corridor, Peek's quiet sobs somehow carrying through the ship behind you as you leave. Well, no, now they're crying too. Everybody crying now. Should we evacuate the eye? Should we protect the eye? What should we do? Devise a strategy. Peek is tirelessly analyzing the flux data and testing countermeasures on the shadow protocol. They need your help. A desperate plan? Peek is desperately looking for a way to combat both the coming flux event and the shadow protocol infecting the station. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you crying, Dolby? Why are you crying? Why are you cry? Because? Because what? Because, 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 because! Hmm, terminal flux, huh? The next flux event is coming and it can't be stopped. The sooner your preparations are complete, the better the outcome. Uh oh. Wow. I haven't thought that far ahead. Okay. <clears throat> well, we have two endings here. Evacuate or protect the eye. If it's like the other game, other endings, we should be able to leave and then reload and do the other one. If it if it forces me to um 
do a whole nother playthrough for the other ending, it's gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like this. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna be like. <laughs> I want to see both endings though, though. I want to see both. I want to see both endings. But I don't know if I pick protect if it will uh, let me go back to the other one. Is the ones to stay continue? So that's what that's what I, that's what I'm wondering. I'm contemplating. That's what I am contemplating. On. Although I feel like the evacuate ending is going to be similar to the one where we leave with uh, Lem and Mina. We're now on a ship to who the fuck knows where. We don't know where we're going. Or maybe like uh, Ankita's ending. It's interesting that Pilgrimon has fewer things. I wonder if I can fill up boats and then choose at the end or something. This one's a plus two. Look at my ones. You hit a good rhythm, and soon the supplies are heading out to all corners of the Pilgrim Seed. This could work! Ah, it can work, alright. Hmm. They're both danger, man. Actually, it doesn't matter which one you pick, right? You work in sync with the other teams, splitting the jobs so that by the time you are done, there are ten of, tens of new berths in place. Okay. Uh, I don't think I should do two for either one. Wait, what? Not full yet, though. As you stop to rest in one of the Pilgrim Seed's cavernous bays, hopping up to sit on a supply crate, you hear a now familiar voice behind you. Slaper, glad you are here. Soul's suit hisses, and as he clanks up towards you. I knew you'd help us out. We sure do appreciate everything you do for us. No worries. I do mean it, Slaper. He looks away down the bay, to where sparks jump from welding torches. It's a grim job to be doing without a few friends around. Paul settles beside you, flinching a little, but making himself comfortable in the crate. Seems the word got out, this way or that. He nods towards the welders a little way off, one of them wearing shipyard overalls. We've had people flowing in from the eye, looking for a place. In truth, it's more than I thought, Soul sighs, which means more mouths to feed, more bodies to house, more people to protect. That's good, right? Good for those that can get a place, maybe. Soul frowns. But none of this is good for anyone. We were supposed to stay here, not keep running. Soul waves away the thought. Don't listen to me. He gives you a sideways glance. Just a tired old man. He stretches. I have something to ask, though. What is it? With all these evacuees. Well, we need a change in plan. He shrugs. Pilgrim Seed can't do it alone. We need the others to help out. We can carry them, house them, but that's all. Now, you settled down the folks from Ember's Step and they sent those supplies grown in those dust houses of theirs. If we could get more... He nods to himself. And then the song crews. He rubs his chin. What we need from them is scouting and security. We don't need that docking axis of theirs, but with some careful scavenging, they could be our fleet. These folks, they know you, sleeper. You earned their trust already. He put a hand on your shoulder. I sent my requests out, and they seem to be complying, but I need you out there making sure the work gets done. Time is our greatest enemy now. Soul stares into the distance. I need you out there speeding things up. Of course. Soul nods. All right, then. He climbs off the crate, his suit hissing as he does. Think of it this way. Either you won't have to deal with me much longer. He smiles his uneven smile. Either way. Either way. Either way. What? Unless, of course, you were planning to come along for the trip. 
I'm considering it. Lil nods. Lots to think about. He winks. Just don't let it get in your way. Sol waves a hand and starts tor off towards the bay's entrance. The crackling sound of the welding quickly covering up his clanking suit. He watched the workers, the shipyard, contractor chatting among them, already looking like he belongs. You push the thoughts of escape, of home, and of the future to the back of your mind and get up. There's always more to do. You better head to the other ships in the flotilla to see what can be done. He just gave me more work, though. That's all this man did, to give me more work. Oh my gosh, look at this. You see this here, cat? Or at least cutscenes, anyway. Protect is coolest. <gasps> so you're not curious about the other ending? You're back. Welcome back, Lula. You were showing people on the call of Dutai. She was in charge around here, huh? Guess we'll see what I can watch. I knew you'd come. Aki greets you outside the dust house, her eyes as bright as always. You are very welcome here, as always. Good to see you, Aki. Aki smiles. And you, sleeper. Aki puts a hand on your arm. Walk with me. And she guides you past the dust houses. You look inside and see other members of the crew working in the orange dust, planting and tending to the steppe ecosystem. We are here to be the suppliers for the evacuees. I am sure you have heard. We will put the dust houses to use. She lends you past a dust house where the dust is less, the orange glow not as bright, the air a little more clean. We are adapting slowly, but we are adapting. We have to produce food, clothes, necessary things for the journey ahead. She smiles. The plants of Step are once again sustaining a population, and that makes me proud. Aki stops at a half-empty dust house. Scoured of its sand, it is being filled with mulch. We brought this from the Greenway. She stares at the green and brown, a strange sight, even to you, now that you are used to the amber dust of steppe. I admit, it is hard work for us. You are not familiar with these plants. Can you help us? Aki meets your eye. I will do my best. Thank you, she nods solemnly. I know that the eye is suffering, that it is at risk. I know what that is like. It's okay. I wish I had a lesson to share with you from our loss on step. She shakes her head. But for the moment, I cannot see what that might be. She gathers herself. If it gives you meaning, the work here is steady and worthwhile. But if you do not have time... She smiles a weak smile. I will not blame you. Uh. Hold on to your memories, but not too tightly. She pauses. Sadness will not sustain you. He falls silent and you both watch the work in the dust house for a while. You can already see a greening fringe of moss on the mulch in the dust house. The first signs of new life. Will you soon be like the people of Step leaving behind a home? Or will you be stubborn and hold your ground, despite what it might mean? You wait a little longer with Aki. The moment of welcome suspension in time. A rare moment in this rush towards an end. You glance at Aki and she puts a hand on your shoulder in solidarity. After a short while, Aki sighs. It is good to see you, sleeper. Perhaps we will see each other again before we depart. He walks away, fingertips brushing against the glass of the dust house windows. Aki turns back for a moment, as if she wants to say something, then thinks better of it and turns away. This gave me more work. Look at all this work. Look at all this work! More work! I go over to Peter and talk to him and he's gonna give me more work! More work! More work! More work! Da da da. Oh, well, we, should, we should just end stream and come back next week though. It's all just more work. And we got those other endings to do, too. 
which will probably take an hour on their own. This isn't going to be as quick as I thought it would. They just throw up a bunch more work at you. <laughs> dust house tending. To be used on the flotilla's outward trip, the dust houses will need careful tending, especially those being adapted to greenway plants. Harvest automation. Dust house efficiency could be massively improved with an automated harvesting system, but the step techs Te but the step techs need some help. Step tech, step tech, step 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 step. Tongue twister there. Greeting step, huh? The dust houses now have a new function to feed the evacuees on their journey to the starboard belt. That means many changes. Oh my gosh! Talk to Peter. The docking access is in chaos when you arrive. The staccato burst of welding torches, the shouts of crews gathering, the rapid flow of supplies and kit from dock to dock. You can tell already that news of the flotilla's imminent departure has reached this place before you. I'm to join the Exodus, sleeper. Peter approaches you from one of the working crews, a smile on his face and a lightness in his step you haven't seen before. What's happening? Peter gestures to the chaos. The singers are rising, sleeper. Peter eyes you. I suppose you are here on Soul's orders again. He winks at you. Nothing Ember's Hearth like to do more than ordering people around. Ah, you guessed it. Well, Sol has it lucky anyway. His request for us to dismantle the Axis and be the vanguard for the flotilla's onward journey to the Starward Bill aligns perfectly with our plans. What plans? To leave this damned place, of course. We've been prepping ever since the Cordon collapsed. If we can build our escape and make the hearth ships think we are complying with their orders at the same time, then it's a two and one for us. Peter shakes his head. Those idiots will never see it coming. We can't abandon them. We are our own flotilla, sleeper. Peter looks away at the busy axis. We aren't going to tie ourselves to heart and step any longer. Why would we? Um, is that a typo and it's supposed to be hearth? There's been a couple times I've seen hearts instead, and I've wondered if it's a typo. And they forgot the H at the end. I bet, that, I bet it is. <laughs> to help them! Peter scoffs. They're taking on ev evacuees from the eye. That's what I heard. So how about they help themselves before they ask us to make up for their bad decisions? Peter looks down. Look, nothing against you or yours, sleeper. But we have to get out from under the shadow of Step and Hearth. And this is the time. Peter grimaces. We won't let the flux catch us again. Not a chance. And for the first time you see fear in his eyes. You want to help us make that leap? Grab a torch. Talk to a crew. You're welcome to it. Peter sniffs. Every person here is free to prove themselves. I'll help when I can. Peter nods. Just a stop on the road, sleeper. I'm afraid that's all this was. Peter glances out past the docking axis, through the outer windows to the stars beyond. A lot of space out there for those willing to take it. He looks you in the eye. I hope you'll be around before we go. But if not, he smiles, stay strong. And with that, Peter thumps you on the shoulder and heads back to his crew, with a purpose, a direction visible in every step of his rapid structure. A rapid structure, rapid stride. Not every structure. Did I saw STR and my brain auto completed or something. Look how busy this one is. Crew management. The crews of Ember Song are effective but headstrong and stubborn. They need direction and management. Axis reclamation. As the docking axis is dismantled and the individual ships refitted, as much of the material as possible needs to be reclaimed. Dock dismantling. The ships from Ember Song will act as scouts and security for the evacuees. That means dismantling the docking axis. Oh, shit. Everyone has one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve? Everyone has twelve uh, blocks to fill up. I gotta get them all done. There's no way that's just six. That's just step one of like twelve. 
Are they all danger? That one's a risky. But both of this one is danger. The other two have one danger and one risky. Oh look, they expect to die, just let them on. How dare the hearth want us to help them after all they've done to us. How could they do this to us? They said they never care to help him return. True. I'll do this one though, because it's a plus two versus the other one's a plus one. Woohoo! And then we're gonna go sleep. I think we should save the rest of this for next week though. Because I have a feeling it's gonna take a few more hours to actually finish the game. It'll probably take another hour and a half to, uh. Finish chapter three here. I wonder if I can do both endings in one place. Let's Google it. Let's Google it. Wow. Let's let's Google it. And you get both DLC endings in one playthrough. If I could spell. <clears throat> Otherwise, I would just speed run. Oh, uh, this person on the internet says the DLC works in the same way as the base game. After the ending, you can go back and choose differently. There's no need to replay everything again. That guy's not talking the full story, though, because if you choose to stay, you do have to replay everything again. But they, only, they, don't, they only half know what they're talking about. They probably picked the leave every time and just didn't notice. Or didn't think about it. Wow, what? It looks like you get the choice. I suppose worst case scenario, I could just blaze through. Because you can access the DLC pretty early in. Actually, is there a new game plus, I wonder? Probably not. I only barely managed to get everything done in the first DLC. You can probably... Honestly, I think, I think the first DLC... Only affects how far the Pilgrim Seed's progress was in Chapter 2. I think that's the only thing it affects. I've really never gotten an ending so far in the game. Well, I've gotten like, uh, six endings. There's a, there's a shit ton of endings in this game. I got two endings with Lemon Mina. I got two endings with... Ankita. I got two endings with... Rico. Are there any other ones? I think it was those. I think that's it. There were three achievements I missed on my first playthrough, which I think are also endings. I haven't uh, looked at them too closely. I suppose I could. I was seeing if I could finish this game tonight, but I don't think it's going to happen. It's gonna be next week instead. I'm gonna look real, super quick. Okay, two of the three achievements uh, have story ending flags. So two of the three achievements left for me to get are also endings that I missed. So there's at least two other endings. And there's two endings for this DLC. Well, I think we'll choose to leave first and then we'll choose to stay. I expect it to be like the uh, 
base game. If you have to blaze through another playthrough, you know what I'm not going to be doing? I'm not going to be reading everybody's dialogue! It probably is much faster to play through the game if you just skip all the fucking dialogue. Of course, you're missing the whole point in the game then, but on on a second playthrough, who cares? Hello, by the way, Deus Grande. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Endings mean more dialogue. Next game. No, 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 no. Citizen Sleeper will probably finish next week. We'll finish chapter three here, and then we'll blaze through until we get to the other endings and stuff. Hey, Zoki, Woki, what's up? And what's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? Out next week. Why not? I think I'm gonna be too busy grinding guilds. Is that what you think? As you said, I didn't. Did I miss something? What did I say? I thought about it, but it's going to take a bunch more work. Nothing I can do here but sleep. We're going to sleep to save, and then we're going to... I said the next week you spoke to you funny. <laughs> hey, you made it sound like you weren't going to be here next week. Saving! Oh, thanks for the raid, Zuki. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? You have a nice stream? I've got 12 or well, 11 more cycles to fill all these circles. Oh my gosh. Although this one's already like three quarters done, right? Yep. You're not? Wait, what? What's going on? I think I can easily finish that. I can probably do all of them in 12 days. And then just make an ultimate choice like the other endings. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your vo vacation next week, though. You enjoy your vacation. I think that's about all I'm doing on this game today, though. There's too much left to do. And my voice will not read this game for another three hours, young man. It's already getting tired. It needs to rest. It needs to sleep. To relax. At least not do the voices. Hmm. Uncool. Oh, man. You're so demanding, man. You must finish this game tonight. No, I mustn't. In fact, I wasn't expecting to finish this game tonight. Because I was only in uh, chapter 2 of the DLC. And it took me like 2 hours to finish chapter 1 in the DLC. So I was never expecting to finish this entire game tonight. I was expecting to end up somewhere in chapter 3, which is exactly what happened. And next time we can do the rest of chapter 3, get both of those endings. Start a new save. I don't think there's a new game plus. Start a new save. Blaze through. Following the guide to get the other endings that I missed. I have no idea where those endings would be. Maybe the... Well, maybe the shipyard guy? Because I think I failed his stuff. Unless he's just supposed to get mad at me. And tell me to fuck off. I don't know. It's possible. Like that first guy you started with, where, right right there, who gives you that empty container. Maybe it's related to that. Maybe I was supposed to pick the right option. I'll know. The janitor guy rewards. What? Oh, yeah. Alright, well, next time we will finish this DLC and probably the whole game. 
as well just blaze through to do the uh, achievements we missed. I don't know where that'd be. I haven't looked it up yet. I don't know where that'd be. I haven't looked it up yet. Well, yeah, I hope you had a good stream, Zucky. I hope it was very exciting whatever you were playing. Whatever you were the one. This game is called Citizen Sleeper. It's a pretty cool game. You play as this uh, green robot thing. It's called a sleeper. Wow. Very cool, right? You get here on this station trying to escape from the corporate corporation that basically owns you trying to make a life for yourself you don't want to just be some robot following orders you want to have your own existence man you want to just be a human if you had a good stream yeah i'm having a good stream what time is it two three forty seven i'm streaming for three hours and 47 minutes oh my gosh I guess it's time to take my snack break. Mm. And then go to the next game that is not Foam Stars, because I was just joking about that, Dobie. I don't even know how many people you need for that. Or how long it takes. Ruffle Rick. What? Oh my gosh. 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 <laughs> Oh, so many cool emotes. Foam Stars could have been decent. Yeah, I was joking about playing it earlier. I don't know if I'll actually play it. Ever. Because it looks like one of those games that will constantly add new trophies for. I'm a trophy hunter in case you didn't know that. Although the new trophy update they added is uh, apparently very easy to do. It only takes like five or six hours. <laughs> it's dead. Yeah, I saw an article today that said 95% of its player base is toast. Is toast. That's it for Citizen Sleeper for today. All right, VOD viewers. That's it. That's it. Get out of here. We'll be back with more Citizen Sleeper next week. Uh, probably. Most likely. 